Public Art Commission meeting to order on June 1st at 7.02 p.m. <laughs> um, there is Jamal coming. I thought I saw Jamal. Jamal's here. I'm here. Um, I don't I don't see he's myself. Not, yeah, you're not listed as a panelist. You're just an attendee right now. <laughs> you might need to get upgraded. Promote you. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you, Sarah. Oh, no problem. No problem. All right. Well, and I think maybe Sophie, too. Am I on the sure. wrong one again? Are you promoted as a panelist? I just clicked the link I got, but maybe. Okay. Well, we have a lot on the agenda, so I'm just going to go ahead and start with roll call and then Vanita, if you want to take a look and see if maybe we need to do some additional promotions. Um, now we see you, Jamal. There we go. <laughs> um, so I will start with Allison Buck. Hi, I'm present in Ann Arbor. Thank you, Jamal Bufford. Hey, I'm present, Superior Township. Beautiful. Uh, Sarah Fuller, myself, present in Ann Arbor. Uh, Sophie Grier. I'm present in Ann Arbor. Wonderful. John Katarski. Present in Ann Arbor. Fantastic. Penny Le Peggy Leonard. I muted myself. Present in Ann Arbor. Perfect. <laughs> Marionetta Porter. Present in New York. Oh, fun. And <laughs> Lynn Song. Present Mackinac Island. Wonderful. Thank you all. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, set the agenda. So um, I invite a motion to approve, approve the agenda as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, John. And a second? Thank you, Peggy. Um. So, uh, oh, and I'm sorry, I totally forgot a big welcome to Mary Thiefels. I am so sorry. Our newest commissioner um, coming back, and we are so happy to have you, Mary. Thank you for joining us tonight, and congratulations for uh, joining the commission. So happy to have you. Thank you. And uh, so, now uh, that we've approved the agenda, let's move right into our special presentation, which is of course about our ARPA funding. Um, so I am going to give the floor over to Heather, who will give us a uh, presentation on uh, the funding. Sure, and if you'll bear with me a moment, I'm gonna share my screen. So, um, oh, it looks like you need to enable my screen sharing, Vanita, if you don't mind. And I'll get my presentation up and running. I'm still not able to share my screen. No. I'm not able to share my screen or my video now. <laughs> okay, hold on a minute. I, if you make me co-host. I might... made you a co-host. I made you an actual host. It yeah. actually made John Katarski the host is what popped up. So maybe just went up in the wrong person by accident. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. Sometimes that moves around. But congratulations, John, for your promotion. You can call <laughs> me Heather. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'll sit back and... <laughs> So does that not allow me to remove him as a host either? Maybe I'm I don't know. Yeah, maybe John, maybe you need to make Heather the host now. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Uh, gonna do I think if you um, look at the list of participants and then there's dots over to the right. Uh, yeah. It won't let me change her. Okay, let me uh, go to Heather. 
and look okay. up there on, on the right hand side if you scroll over, there should post. be a more button i'll make her okay so yep oh, she's the host now yeah good okay. work sorry teamwork Excellent. It was brief yes. but exciting for me. <laughs> Thanks, John. Wow. Already, this meeting is riveting. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. You should be able to see the presentation now. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. All right, I'm seeing head nods. Okay, so we're here to talk about ARPA funding. And the good news is, is that there's money to be spent. So we're going to get into that. It's just a matter of the how to. Um, before we get into that, um, actually, I'm going to skip this because there is no Q&A feature. Um, but if you want to raise your hand digitally, there is the raise your hand feature at the bottom if you want to um, share a thought. Or star nine, if you're calling in, you can virtually raise your hand that way through the phone. And then we do have meeting norms. This is considered a public meeting where we're getting into a discussion. Um, and we do ask that people remember the dignity of others as we get into this discussion. Um, so with that, we ask that you commit to learning and avoid speculation. We also ask that if you're speaking over the phone that you move to a quiet place so we can hear you. We do really want to hear what you have to say, so that always helps. And I know that's not always easy, but if you can, you know, make sure you can you try to get to a quiet place. And then once again, just rem remember the importance and rights and dignity of others. So please remember to critique ideas, not people, and that you are thoughtful about your language. We want this to be an inclusive, um, forum for everybody. So please consider the language that you use and try to avoid any offensive language. Okay, with that, getting back to our main point is that we have money to spend. So we have $500,000 that's been allocated to the arts. So now what? And that's what we're here to figure out with you tonight. So we want to get into a discussion about um, so I'm going to do a quick review, and many of you have probably already seen this presentation and, and much of this information, but I think it would be good to do a quick review before we get into the discussion. So I'm going to get to that. So uh, as many of you might recall that there is no real free lunch with this. You know, this is federal money, so there are some strings attached. Um, and those strings, in this case, have to do with timing. So... Um, the cost must be obligated by December 31st, 2024. And then we must fully expend the funds by December 31st, 2026. So that gives us two years to spend this. Um, there is eligibility requirements. Um, in this case, we're going with the eligibility requirement that we are wanting to serve the hardest hit community, um, some of the hardest hit community um, here in Ann Arbor, which is the arts community. These funds can't be reoccurring um, because they are just kind of a one-time shot. This was meant to sort of uh, boost things, you know, and help us recover from the effects of COVID. Uh, so we need to be careful about how we spend it in the sense that we can't uh, put it to a program that we hope continues in perpetuity. Um, there are re significant reporting requirements. So federal funds, if any of you have ever dealt with this before, is they quite require a lot of paperwork. Um, so with any money that we give out, we do need to report back how we're using that, and um, we need to report that back in um, fairly great detail. So this is uh, what was recommended to council um, with a full set of recommendations on how to spend the ARPA funding. Um, so during that process, as many of you probably know and participated in, um, the arts funding wasn't uh, initially on the list of funding options for ARPA funding, but the arts community came out and wanted funding to go to this community. So that was put forward in a recommendation. And that's what this recommendation stated was that we have heard loud and clear from the arts community that we would like to have a portion of these funds dedicated to artists who have been the most adversely affected by the pandemic. So we propose that City create a grant program award up for $10,000 to artists to pursue an artistic endeavor that would be displayed or performed in the city of Ann Arbor. So that's what went forward. And what we heard back is that that's not really a perfect idea, that we're kind of headed in the right direction in the sense that 
um, we're funding the arts, but um, this is not exactly the ideal way to do that. Um, so what happened after that was an approved amendment from city council, um, which uh, read um, these whereases. I won't read through every word with this, but it, you know, it, it acknowledges that the art community was really hard hit. And it resolved that city council approved up to $200,000 for arts-based trauma programs from the $500,000 allocation of ARPA funds for funding the arts. So that's where this leaves us, is really trying to figure out how to divvy up the money. This is a budget example um, and kind of where our minds are right now, but we really wanna hear from everybody here tonight about how we should adjust this. But this is kind of what we're thinking of how the money should be divvied up. Uh, so we can come back to this slide again. This is just, just putting it out there as one way to do it, but we can slice and dice this in many different ways. So what I wanted to do tonight was get into a set of four questions. I did actually have an interactive um, uh, method for us to get into, which is called Jamboard. But unfortunately, um, technology has thwarted us once again, and we don't actually have a good mechanism to get the link out to you. Um, there's some restrictions that our, I, our IT puts on our Zoom accounts. Um, and in this case, we don't have the Q&A feature which we thought we had, which I thought we'd be able to get you the link. So instead, I think we're just gonna have a discussion here tonight, going through each of these questions. And I am actually gonna take this down um, because I do wanna see people. It's hard for me to um, see hands raised when I have the presentation up, but I can always put this back up to, um, so people can come back and look at the question. But we'll start on the first question, which is given the timeline and constraints, what's the best way to equitably distribute these funds to support the arts community in Ann Arbor? So with that, I'm gonna stop the share and look for virtual hands raised and we can call on you and let you speak and just hear your thoughts. Heather, mm -hmm. I have uh, four additional folks who need to come in, if you could let them in as well. Oh, okay. I'm the sole mm -hmm. host. Then? Yeah. Okay. All right. You need um, four people to come in as a panelist. Is that what you mean? Attendees, okay. yes. Just as attendees. Okay. I'm not seeing people waiting. Are you in attendees? Yeah. Okay, so I have Curtis, Hannah, Jenny, Jeremy, and Nick, who all need to. Um, okay, They're, they seem to be there as attendees. Did you want me to promote them to panelists? No. Here, how about this? I will make you co-host. And <laughs> and that should enable you to be able to do that. Yes, thank you. Yeah, no problem. So in the meantime, we have two hands raised. I see that Jeff Crockett has your hand raised. And so we'll go to Jeff and then uh, Tuana and Deb. So Jeff. Um, yes. And I be able to talk. <laughs> Appreciate. I'm a little unclear though whether this is part of the public participation session where people can express ideas for how public art can be funded. Is this is this the right time for that? Or this? Are... Yeah, if this is the right time for that. This is a public interactive meeting. Um, and there's a lot of background noise. I don't know if that can, if you can limit that. So. That's not um, in my. It's not coming from me. Oh, okay. I'm not sure who's that coming from. Well, All right, here's that. Better. Okay. <clears throat> um, so yes, it is. It's within the parameters, though, of the ARPA funding that we have allocated. Yes. So we're not okay. generally discussing ARPA funding, but this, how the no. ARPA funding should be refined. 
No, that's fine. Uh, so my name is Jeff Crockett, and I've lived in Ann Arbor for 40 years downtown. <clears throat> and I help uh, recording in progress a green team, which is basically a group of over 20 volunteers who have helped to activate a number of gardens on the, the council of the con or the city commons, the center of the city commons. And I don't know if you noticed, but last year we activated two gardens. Um, but the, the long-term goal is to activate a number of other gardens and create sort of educational sites. Um, we have engaged Project Grow with Joe at Rioma, and we have also <coughs> um, engaged uh, Wild Ones, uh, which is a group which uh, advocates for the planting of native plants, and they've joined our effort this year. And in the process of that, we've also been involved in trying to activate the commons. And we're pleased that Mary was involved um, last year in a couple events. Uh, one was uh, chalk drawing, which was really well received on the main part of the parking lot. But the other thing we reached out for Mary for was to put up a mural uh, on a wall that's just uh, next to the primary garden. It's a seven foot by 16 foot long section of concrete. And we were envisioning um, uh, a mural of flowers to support what was being done in a number of different sites. Uh, there is also um, a three foot high by 40, uh, three foot long knee wall that uh, goes right by there. And then, for those of you who are familiar with the elevator, just to the east side, there's also a fairly large wall. And we think that those three spots would make excellent candidates for, for public art. We are involved in sort of rebranding re that site and creating a civic space. And there have been a number of events that have been held so far. So I wanted to speak in favor of having a conversation to understand the process for how we can apply um, because we're very interested and, and active in this. And the other thing I wanted to point out is that the uh, <clears throat> Bicentennial is coming up in a couple of years and we're looking at this site as sort of a, a potentially a dynamic site for doing a whole bunch of different events. And what better way to, uh, you know, have people come to that event by seeing wonderful art. So uh, this is sort of a, an initial idea and a proposal, and I would be most appreciative to know where we take it from here. But my question is, are you looking for like just general ideas of where to put art or in the application for that, are you requiring specific concepts and, you know, and ideas, or is this something that the art commission would determine um, in terms of what actually would go in these sites? Uh, some clarification on that would be most appreciated. Yeah, and basically we're kind of at ground level of forming this program. Um, so we don't have um, actually a method for people to apply yet. So that is all to come. Today, we're just trying to get a sense of really how to equitably distribute these funds. So well, we welcome you know, ideas about um, different projects. Um, really, it's about the method, the, uh, the means of how these funds should be distributed within the parameters of arts funding. So hopefully that helps. And maybe I, I should turn it over to Sky. Um, I actually am not seeing you. We have many people here. If you had anything to add to that, I just wanted to give you a chance to detail that out a little bit more. Yes. Yeah, so I, I guess, well, Heather, you did a great job explaining that. I think what's happening here is that we're building a new grant program that has never existed before, uh, new programs using new dollars. And some of that money um, has been identified as sort of like, here are ways that we could do this. It came both through the, the memo from um, the city administrator saying individual grants to individual artists. Um, and then there was an additional amendment that was approved by council that said a portion of these dollars could also go to support 
um, trauma-informed arts-based programs. And so um, before we go build these programs, we're looking for a little bit more input. Um, and that's what we're seeking here today, both from the community and from the, the Public Arts Commission to provide some, a little bit more detail about what's how to prioritize those dollars across the different options, right? It's a limited amount of dollars. And so one day we will have those answers to those questions, which is like, how do you apply? Um, but this is more like, how do we, what's the, what's the most impactful way we can set this up so that we feel good about how these dollars are ultimately distributed? Oh, me, me, me. Yeah, and hope that Jeff, helps. thank you. Your, and your project may or may not fall under the scope of the ARPA funding that we're speaking about right now that we're discussing, um, but all of our public art commission meetings are, they are public um, and you are welcome to join um, any of our meetings to discuss this idea further. Um, and we can get some contact information perhaps exchanged. It looks like you've worked with Mary um, Thiefels before. So we might be able to discuss that uh, mural project um, in a continued manner outside of um, this particular uh, topic tonight as well. Great, thank you. So next up is Tiana and please let me know if I mispronounced your name um, and you should be able to talk, please go ahead. Oh, hello everybody, I'm Tiana Clemens. I'm a local artist from Ann Arbor. Um, I think that it would be great if we could actually use some of the funding to rent a, a space for a year to do um, an art, art exhibit for students, um, teaching them how to curate, um, also teaching them how to run a show, by also utilizing professional artists who are struggling or disenfranchised by giving them a stipend for helping the students be able to put on those showcases, And we'll also be able to promote that as well as actual exhibits. Um, I also think it would be an amazing thing because we, as you stated, the funds can can only be used once. So if that was to be a success, we'd probably be able to get funding to keep that going for years to come. But also in regards to COVID and the trauma that it has impacted on a lot of the youth. I think it would be great to have a space for them to do art specifically and be able to showcase what they what what their experiences are or feelings in a creative way. That's all. Thank you. Okay, Deb Pollock, you're up next. Uh, <clears throat> hi, thank you. Oops, I think we, did we lose you? Doug? We might, we might have. Also, it looks like there's a couple people that aren't actually permitted, if I'm not mistaken. Um, is Nick Azaro in here? Nick has his hand up and Deb is on the attendee list, but I don't, and she has her hand back up. I'm not sure if she um, has the access to talking. There isn't a little parenthesis next to her that says talking permitted. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I noticed about Nick. As Nick well, yeah, right? Nick doesn't, isn't permitted to talk either. <laughs> Hello? There's can Deb. you hear me now? Yes, we can. Oh, great. Thanks. That was fun. Um, I don't envy you all having to do these public meetings with these machines and, and technology. Uh, my name is Deb Pollack. I am the director, I think most of you know, of Creative Washtenaw and have been engaged with that organization for a couple of decades now, it seems. Um, and we work with artists and creatives all over Washtenaw County and hundreds of them right here in Ann Arbor. Um, and I have a couple of questions before I, I ask or, or make my point. Um, can, can you... Heather or or Sarah, how, how much time do we have this evening? We this segment was going to go until about eight thirty. At least that's what I was anticipating. So we do have a fair amount of time to have a discussion. Okay, great. Thank you. I, I just wanted that parameter. And then you had stated from your slide that the recommendation at this time, or am I understanding that this is for consideration? The recommendation at this time is that ten thousand dollars would go to artists. And then the balance of that 
$500,000 would be eligible for arts organizations that do BIPOC and trauma programs. Is that correct? Or is that what we're working within? Or are we looking at opening that up further? Yeah, and Sky, if you don't mind me putting you on the spot to detail that out a little bit more. Yeah, those were the two, those were the two parameters that came from leadership. So the first, which was the um, the language around 10 up to ten thousand dollars to individual artists to create or perform art was was in that original memo from the uh, city uh, city administrator to council. And so that language sort of was approved with the additional amendment to, to um, provided by council around the, um, the trauma-informed art space programming. And so those are the two parameters that have been sort of publicly discussed. And so that's not to say that if if that thinking was wrong or if there, if this group or we hear a lot of feedback that we need to broaden our thinking or adjust that that is what the city administrator and the staff are looking for before we like go out and try to actually build this program. Um, and what about what about mm -hmm. the conversations that happened after the initial proposal from um, the administrator? There'd been there's been weeks and weeks and many conversations about ten thousand dollars per artist. The intent that these funds are for art that they could be, and there's been a lot of public engagement in regards to artists and creative businesses and organizations because they've all been adversely impacted by ARPA. Are you saying at this point that that's off the table? I don't think we are saying that's off the table. I think we're trying to get more um, feedback around scoping this because unlike the other projects, they didn't receive that same level of public scoping. And so we're so actually going back to the before the original plans were done to get the public engaged in more of a direct way, like you did right. with your other individual um, initiatives. Okay, thank you. Right, that's a, but, that's but we do have the, sort of the guiding posts of what has been talked about, both what was put forward in that memo from the city administrator and both and the, the language that was approved by council around the amendment. But there's a lot, there's a lot of vagueness in there in between, right? So right. up to 200,000 can, you know, can be used for, um, for this very specific thing, but the rest of it is, is a little more vague. Um, and so that's why we want to make sure we are hearing the public, incorporating that, those recommendations, both from the public and from the Public Art Commission, um, before we sort of define those, per, those specific parameters. Okay, so considering what the purpose of ARPA funding is for, which is for, for, for a, um, assistance to those adversely impacted by the COVID pandemic, which continues to impact our industry greatly, our industry being the arts and creative industries greatly, not only artists, individual artists, but also the organizations that help make Washtenaw County and Ann Arbor in particular, a destination location, add to our quality of life, add to our economic impact, and as it makes this community a great place to live, work, and play. Um, the in interest in helping and assisting both artists, creative workers, and organizations and businesses of, is of great um, interest to both the creative Washington, but mostly importantly, the people that we serve and the people that we interact with on a regular daily basis. Um, you know, we we initiated a creative Washington aid fund just to help people get through a, a minor, my, not a lot of money, but some money to get into the hands of these artists and creatives. And there's hundreds of them that have requested it. And so my point here is, if somebody asked me today, if this conversation went in a particular way, what would make you happiest? And I said that it's not making me happy. It's making the community members that we work with and Creative Washington's intent, interest here that we've been hearing constantly for two and a half years, two and a half years from artists and creatives and businesses throughout this community. And that is to open these funds up for artists and creative workers and businesses and nonprofits and for-profits within, within Ann Arbor so that they can restore their, that will pay back bills that they have, you know, the debts that they've in, in, um, incurred during this period of time so that they can recalibrate so that they can go forward to continue to in fact be that creative industry that makes this community what it is. And not one-time projects, certainly absolutely positively not one-time projects and to give the monies to 
the artists that know and the creatives and the businesses that know how to use it best. You know, a lot of them have gone into debt. A lot of them have um, are unable to buy supplies. A lot of them are just in very difficult circumstances. And that's the, these ARPA funds could be so greatly, greatly valued by these individuals and businesses and organizations. Deb, can you provide a couple of examples of businesses um, that are just maybe off the top of your head right now? That and you're talking about paying bills, not not creating yeah. artwork. Mm -hmm. I sent Allison a list today of more than ninety or people and organizations who have sought funds from Creative Washington Aid over the last two and a half years. And there are people. There are groups like Ann Arbor Civic Theater. They're all of the. Um, all of the art fairs have requested support because they have difficulty making paying their bills. Even those organizations that took out idols, those loans, if you will, they have to pay those back. And then there's the individual artists and creatives who don't have gallery spaces to show their works anymore, or they don't have the gigs, the musical gigs that they had previously, because we're still in that circumstance where the public is not attending events, if you look across the board, and I do nationally and internationally, we're still at about 40% of audiences. People can't get hired, they, and, and they're desperate. You know, they can't pay their bills, they can't pay their rent. It's still happening. This is not over for this community. Oh, I agree. I mean, the, the county commission meeting is happening right now where um, our rapid rehousing agencies haven't received ARPA, uh, ARPA money at all. So there's zero dollars going to rapid heat rehousing like Avalon and Can and Ozone and Alpha House. There are people who are really suffering in our community and we're looking at federal dollars that won't be going to pandemic relief and we'll be seeing homeless encampments soon. So there's a lot of advocacy going around right now for, for folks who are facing, um, who won't get supportive services for housing. Um, and we just published a report saying that our residents beat the odds in eviction when they have supportive services. So. There's a lot of conversations when it comes to federal money and where it's uh, where it can be best used. So it's it's good to hear a, a variety of concerns. As for timing, the wheels of bureaucracy are slow, and I'm glad city staff are here to start this public engagement because they can't really start public engagement until after council voted for this approval, and this is it, right? So even though past conversations have started to get it on the table, it's been voted and approved. So I think what Heather and Sky are saying is that under the Arts Commission, it's a new process of public engagement when we're actually talking about what the what the recommendations coming out of this committee would be to shape the, the actual application process, the grant process versus the need before and the political will to get it before. So uh, you're, at, you're actually kind of ahead the, of the uh, service agencies in town who are fighting for uh, money to house people. You know, at least you have a a process now uh, and uh, an actual allocation where right now the city and the city is voting on um, you know the final budget for our human services partnerships next week and the county commission is voting for it right now um, so I'm, I'm I'm glad we're a little bit ahead of game at least in this area mm -hmm. yeah this was somewhat of a good problem to have that we have money to figure out what to do with so we do have three other hands that are raised right now. So I'm gonna move on to Curtis and then Nick and then express your yes. Okay, Curtis, please go ahead. Hi everybody, can you hear me? I can, yeah. Cool, I am Curtis Wallace, uh, owner operator, artist, uh, the creative studio. And uh, I just kind of wanna, I love everything I've been hearing. Um, and I just wanted to first say, that everything starts, all of this, it starts with creativity. Um, how we're doing this is a part of the art process itself, the creative process itself. Um, <clears throat> that all said, I have been recently uh, been working with a lot of these programs and I figured out a way to, you know, allocate the, you know, some of the funds and get the community involved at the same time. So I've come up with, and I just recently finished a mural um, at, at the Can um, Creekside Community Center for Can. Um, and, um, you know, what we're discovering through um, this funding 
is is uh, is outstanding. It's it's too much to go really to uh, go over, but I can tell you one of the biggest things is really putting into and I know I can put this in a in better way, better terms, but really the artists that have been out here putting in the the work and the sweat. Um, I hear you guys talking about allocating majority of the funds to organizations, but I'll tell you right now, um, and, and some of it to the artists, but if you, if you allocate it to the organizations and just make sure you, you reach out to, to have the uh, organizations start funding these artists, what it's doing for me, <clears throat> it's not only giving me the opportunity to be um, able to be monetized, it's also giving me the opportunity to teach other artists how to be valued in the community and how to monetize their art so that it, they can, we can really uh, preserve it and we can start getting us paid. And, but, but we're not just getting us paid here. It's how can we integrate um, this value for art and creativity as well as get the community involved. And, and again, it's too much to talk about, but I can tell you guys, if we can get that list of a hundred artists and we can get you guys to support us and our vision and, and let us sort of uh, create an, this, this space where we can bounce ideas and help each other out. Um, I, I think the organizations can then turn to us to come into these spaces and to sort of just piggy off what Tiana was saying. I, you know, my, me and my studio, we are currently um, undergoing um, a Kickstarter so that we can have a space to not only continue on the, the education of art and creativity um, through the Be Creative Studio, but to you know create this certification to really let no students and, and creatives out here have put in the work and then show them how to do this art or really help support the art that they're already in that whatever that creative space. And then we curate art shows and have them truly have some stake in the community, not just have this art up on buildings but to curate, you know, art exhibits so that, you know, they can really not just create this, again, this, this um, financial um, freedom or to just give us equity, but to really give us stake, you know, to have this art in people's homes. And I've been visiting our communities all over the U.S. and, and last recently it's been in Denver and how they've curated their art, culture and community I have been taking several pages and bringing them here. And if anyone um, out there who can reach out to me beyond this Zoom call, I can really, um, I think I figured out a way we can do this. Um, where artists, organizations, and our community can have some real diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's that stuff we keep talking about. Not the one time, not the check off the boxes, but to really give us some real stake. And the continuum of it all is real easy. We just got to really value these artists for real because we've been putting it in there. And, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I apologize, Tiana, for to continue to bring it up, but I've been working side by side, you know, with Tiana on a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, I feel like I've just kind of gotten, um, you know, just a foot, a foot up because I've talked to the right people. But her and I are in the same um, sort of circuit trying to find a path for other artists to learn, create, and be valued, if any of that stuff makes sense. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and um, uh, I think it would be great if you have information to share. So I'm not sure who the best person that is to go to, whether it might be Vanita collects that information, <laughs> or Jamal, I see that you just raised your hand. Yeah, I was going to say I have direct uh, uh, connection and I talk to Jamal often about, okay. you know, what we're trying to do. And, you know, he has a gist of it. That's why he, he made sure I got on this call. OK, great. Good. Good, good, good. OK, uh, we have some more hands raised. So how about Nick? We go to you. All right. Good evening, everyone. How's everyone? Good. Oh. Cool. Uh, well, thank you for, for uh, hosting this. Thank you for allowing us to speak. My question is simple, and I'm, I apologize tremendously if I missed this. Uh, 
uh, is this, uh, will this funding be open to all of Washington or is this just Ann Arbor? It is just Ann Arbor. Yeah. So this is funding that Ann Arbor received. Okay. All right. As promised, I was going to keep it simple. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's go to express your yes. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Petal Sandcastle. Um, I actually was a, was a group of us who, uh, when this ARPA money first came out, um, I remember being on campus and seeing this in this meeting. And it was like in three hours, it was about to happen. And <clears throat> I didn't know I was really reading. I was like, I can't be actually reading this. There's a meeting about $24 million happening in three hours. And I, I contact Deb from Creative Washington. I contact everyone and I alert everyone. I'm like, this thing's about to happen. There's a lot of money. We obviously know that arts and creativity and spirituality and wellness and like a perpetual empowerment of community is important. We need to be on this call. Um, and I just, I just wanna take a moment for anyone who did put in effort to make this happen. Um, it is a lot of work goes into being an artivist and I'm just proud of everyone who did do this, who talked to the media, who got signatures. We got over 350 signatures, both digitally and um, written that we never even had to submit because this thing just got approved. It was kind of epic. Um, and I just, I just wanna take a moment to congratulate not only the powers that be for recognizing the importance of this, but also all of the people who made it important and to put a spotlight on it so the powers that be could see it and couldn't walk over it. And so with that in mind, I don't wanna take up too much time, but I, and I don't wanna talk about specific programming because we all have a million ideas on what we think could happen with this money. But I do wanna say that even though you can't do programs, like you can't do things in perpetuity, I do think we all know that the system is designed to at best stifle everyone and, and, and or at worst stifle everyone and at best kind of throw a few dollars now and then like that's the $600 money was a great way to calm everyone for a, a year during the pandemic. And I'm just afraid. Um, I think that we all know how important it is to create perpetual empowerment. And so however we go about doing this, I do think we need to create a flywheel that empowers not only creatives and artists, but people who just people who just are funky chickens and who are who are speaking a different squawk and people listen mm -hmm. to them and they hear them. And just by being and existing, they're they're walking performance art, they're walking activists. And I think if we had, let's say, for example, we empowered 12 to 15 cultural ambassadors or town jesters or facilitators or social lubrication or community leaders, whatever you want to call them, but a dozen or 15 people who are vetted and together they're like a superpower team and it, it could do Ann Arbor so proud and they don't have bosses. They don't necessarily have time schedules. They don't have time yes. schedules, but they're just like, you know what? We believe in you. Here's a stipend here. Maybe even some healthcare. Who the fuck knows? Who knows? I didn't mean drop the F bomb, but. Man, take your time. I hear you. Yeah, you can carry on. Did he get it cut off? He's muted. Oh, I don't know how that happened. Sorry, I got muted. <laughs> you were, you're telling us about chickens. <laughs> that was not an intentional censorship. <laughs> Please go on. Right. I think it's good because I tend to get I tend to get riled up. But I think I think that um, the point is, is that Ann Arbor and I think what everyone loves so much about Ann Arbor is the Ann Arbor of the 90s, that throwback to when it was on. It was, it was pioneer, it was visionary, it was avant garde. It was at the cusp, the cutting edge of what is possible and AI and augmented reality and all this stuff is coming. And I think we have this unique opportunity to let's call it like a UBI to live your why. Right. And so you just do this pilot program that could be so provocative and you don't you don't constrict because all these forms and boxes and it's very constrictive for an artist. An artist, an artist is ultimately tapping the future. And so when you ask an artist to preliminarily fill out these forms for this specific money versus just being like, I see you, I believe in you. You are epic at what you do. Let me release you for a year into Ann Arbor and let's see what you can do. And they create their own social media. They create their own sort of paper trail doing this. And we have, we do our tallies and our benchmarks mm. and all of our things in a different way. And I think it could be, it could be an epic pilot program um, that could, could revolution. There could be yoga. You just be like, 
you know, and you just, it just could happen so quickly and they could be on the fly and they're like, I want to paint nails now in the diag for the next two hours, or I want to do like community garden for the next three Saturdays. But their job is to focus on what could make this community flourish all members of this community and outside of, because I think this money needs to reach outside of Ann Arbor, just saying, and thank you. That's all. Bless you all. <laughs> Man, preach, tabernacle, preach. I hear you. You hear me? To my balls. For real. Curtis, I was finger snapping you the whole time. I'm just saying we're rough. Like we don't always get a ton of time in front of people to actually just present these ideas. And so it doesn't always, Curtis, I felt every ounce of what you're saying. And there is a program. There's a program in perpetuity that can create something that's systemic and beautiful and flowering and can combat the fascist corporate thing because you know it's not going anywhere. Okay, so we got more hands raised. I <laughs> think people are getting into this now. Um, uh, so I do wanna remind everybody, you know, like this is kind of the, the ground floor of how to get this thing started. So um, we are, you know, initially trying to look at how to equitably distribute it. So I do, I'm gonna just take a moment to go back to our questions. Um, not that we can't deviate from it because I do wanna keep this like energy flowing and kind of the minds going and hearts going and all of that kind of stuff. But, um, but eventually we need to come up with something practical, like a program that we can administer. So I do wanna remind people to help us think through that. Um, so the questions are, given the timeline and constraints, what's the best way to equitably distribute these funds to support the arts community in Ann Arbor? The second question is, how should the city prioritize the creation of new public art um, and arts-based trauma programs? The third question is, how should the city prioritize between individual artists and arts organizations? Um, so what is the balance? I mean, really, it's a balance question um, with both of those last few questions. Um, and then the fourth one is, is how should the city prioritize between visual artists and performing artists? And that's also a balanced question. So those are some of the questions that came to our mind. Um, if there's questions that other questions that we should be asking ourselves, please bring those forward. Um, otherwise, let's continue on with the thought. So we'll go on to Boy Choir, A2. Hi, um, sorry, I couldn't change my screen name. My name is Laura and I'm with the Boy Choir of Ann Arbor. Um, I wanted to, I have a couple, three quick comments. I'm going to start with question number three about individual artists versus arts organizations. I think um, it's important to remember that many artists are group artists, ensembles, you know, orchestras, bands, choirs, you know, three people that play in a string quartet or quartet. Um, and I think that when you say just individual artists, you're, you're leaving out a huge amount of artists. Um, and so I'd just like you to be thoughtful about how we define artists. Um, for example, if you look at the michiganhumanities.org, which has a giant list of um, humanities performers in the state of Michigan of all kinds, um, you know, there's there's storytellers and there's banjo players and there's choirs and there's just all kinds of artists. Um, and I, I think it's, when it says not nonprofits and not organizations, there's a difference between um, a nonprofit organization that sponsors something versus the actual artist is a group artist that is an organization. So just be thoughtful mm -hmm. about the definitions there is, is my comment. Um, question number two about new public art versus arts-based trauma programs. I, it's my understanding that the division of money for arts-based trauma has already been determined by council. So I'd like to talk about the new public art and I'm not, I think we should be broad about what new and public are. In other words, you know, any performance is new in some sense. I don't think we have to build new sculptures or new paintings. We could, but we don't have to. Like just having a new performance also counts as new. Um, so I think we should be broad about um, what counts as art in that context. And likewise, I'd like to be broad about what counts as art-based trauma programs. I know that, I don't know, but I believe that came from council being informed of that existence of some specific programs and maybe in other communities. And I think we could be really broad about what that means. In our organization, we lost half our kids and over half of our performances. And the first year of the pandemic, all of our performances were canceled. Um, and the kids are really traumatized in a way from Zoom school, as we all know. And when we got back in person singing, it's like you, the, the relief on their face and the joy that that brings. But we're missing some kids, the hardest hit ones, of course. Um, and so I'm, thought, I'm wondering if there's maybe some way coming to the first question about equitable distribution, is there some way maybe it could be a scholarship program where 
hard hit individuals could use that money to get art class or join a choir or join an orchestra or be in a theater group or whatever. I'm wondering if, if there's a, some sort of scholarship program might be a way some of that money could be equitably be distributed to um, folks that are that were you know high, highly impacted because um, that would be a win win, right? The the kid who who lost the ability to do the art could get the scholarship and the organization could get the the student. So it would be sort of a win win. Um, and then finally, back to question number one, the equitable distribution. I don't know the answer to that, but I would encourage you to make it as easy as possible. Um, nonprofits, artists, all of us are, you know, up the wazoo with trying to fill out forms and grants and get all our ducks in a row to do paperwork. I understand federal funding is limited, but I would encourage you to, to try and make it as simple as possible and as broad as possible so the people that it's hard to apply for can succeed. Thank you so much for requesting our input. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Well, thank you. All right, Darius, let's go to you. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not anymore, I guess. <laughs> I think we lost you. Hold on one second. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> OK. Can you guys hear me now? Yep, we're good. Um, I'm kind of here representing a group of artists that is uh, kind of close to home to a specific um, event or issue that's kind of passed by as of recent. Um, I'm not sure if anyone in this meeting has kind of seen um, the tags that have been popping up, um, like referencing a, a suitor or like a long live suitor or anything like that. Um, yeah, yeah, I know. So, yeah, um, a few of us are pretty close to um, his friends and family, and they were actually kind of talking to us, a group of artists, about um, maybe getting like a real mural done to kind of, you know, more solidly memorialize, if anything, rather than, you know, just kind of tagging, which obviously eventually is probably going to have to come down and whatnot. Um, I think. Um, representing a memorial with a mural would be a lot more long lasting, um, could receive a lot more input from people and in terms of uh, motifs and what goes into it and whatnot. So um, I guess the greater question here would just be um, if there's anything relative to just funding for getting the materials for some of these ideas and um, some of these people's visions to kind of manifest in a mural um, would be our biggest question if there was like a pool of funding or, you know, just a kind of bank of materials for paint and anything that we might need to clear a wall or prepare, prepare it for a mural or anything like that. Um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm glad you brought that up because I was looking at those tags and thinking that very same thing. So. Um, I'm sure we can make it happen somehow. Cool. cool. Yeah, and I would say stay tuned to how this program develops um, to see if there's opportunities to access funds for that effort. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay. Other comments, questions? I don't see any other hands up. Oh, Jerry, please go ahead. Jerry, you can go ahead. I've been talking for like a paragraph already. Oh no, <laughs> what did we miss? <laughs> so much. Anyways, I'm Jerry Rosenberg and um, I'm affiliated with Wonderful Productions, which does festivals, full moon and Ipsy Glow. Um, I just want to, I, I just want to acknowledge how difficult this is, first of all, for you because of the expansive need and this, unfortunately, it's great to have the money, but it is a piddle of the breadth of what is needed. Um, I, watching all of you, I just wanted to just sort of echo Petals and Curtis about where that core 
joy and necessariness of Bauhaus, the artists giving their voice. Um, and I think that Petals had such an amazing idea coming from um, being amb artists ambassadors and what's the core value? What, what makes, and you started this, I think um, Deb Pollock said this, what made Ann Arbor so special are the arts. And I think you've gotten very corporate and very polished. Um, and I think what brings joy to people and the community is people making art and people doing art and discovering and the um, mystery of just coming upon something and, and it's right there. Um, those are all very intangibles, yet we know it when we see it. Um, and also, I can only say experiencing myself with the first, you know, coming back in person with full moon and having workshops, I was almost crying of joy with the families coming in and being part of something bigger than themselves. So I hope that um, encouraging something that might have a community build, I'm hearing a variety of needs that are being met, community build, giving artists a voice. Curtis is like saying education. I experienced Curtis um, working with children and their first experience of how important that is, to seeing their things on a wall that's permanent. Um, so just maybe starting with these values and looking back about where, you know, where can we make our most, where can we do their most bang for our buck? And, and a couple of things came up, I'm just sort of rifling through is like a memorial, something permanent, something community built, artist driven, education, and inclusion. I'm done. Thank you. That was great. Okay, and we have Deb. Deb, you've got your hand up again. Hi again. So many great comments and people that have real um, passion for what they do and how they can do it. <clears throat> I'm reminded of how many of the funds, the rescue funds throughout the pandemic have been expended. And if you think about the CARES Act funds, the other ARPA funds, some that have come down through places like Michigan Ed uh, Economic Development Corporation and SPARC and others <clears throat> that were invested in our businesses and our community, um, there was less uh, specificity as to exactly how those funds could be spent mm -hmm. as there was letting the people that were using those funds determine how best to use them for themselves and the community. I would like to echo what everybody, and so many of you have said here, artists and creatives and businesses know how to best serve their community and their artists and the groups that they work with. And rather than dictating how exactly they have to be spent, I would echo again, so many people's ideas here, put it into the hands of the people that know what they're doing. Let them activate these dollars for our community for our quality of life, our quality of place, and for their souls and ours. Less, less specificity is going to be, I think, better. And I think I am seeing some heads nods here, not here in the groups. And, and we know what we do best and how we can do it best and how we can, can, can make things happen for our community. So um, lots of great ideas out there and people that are passionate know what they're doing. And I would, I would echo make it simple, get it in the hands of people that can do it and the businesses and the organizations. And please know when I say that, I mean, seriously, artists, creatives, and those organizations, similar to what Laura was talking about and the fact that sometimes organizations engage a ton of artists that can't necessarily do it all there on their own because not everybody has that entrepreneurial, social entrepreneurial streak to move things forward like Petals will, for example, but others can. So. Um, it is very difficult to expend dollars and to determine how best those are um, distributed. But I think we've got a community here that can make that happen, make it simple, 
and keep it engaging and bettering our community as we go forward. And, and perhaps ultimately, and more importantly, start this process that has been absent from this community for decades. We have not had public funding for the arts and the creative industries. And when I say industries, I mean nonprofits and for-profits. We have not had that. That means that who funds these programs? It's the elite. They determine where the money goes and whether you wanna know it or not, or accept it or not, they also determine what gets produced. And so when we put it in the, make it a public aspect, get the public engaged, it does make it more diverse, equitable, inclusive. The public is important in this process. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. Heather, did you call on someone? Because I think you cut out. Oh, did I? I'm sorry. I called on Puddles. You're up next. Uh, hi, sorry. Um, I know I went on a long ramble earlier. I just think this is such a precious opportunity and it would, I would be remiss. Um, after I spoke, Heather, I don't, maybe I misunderstood you, but I just wanted to make clear that there was a very specific program that was the nucleus of that like flowering language. And that is ultimately, um, they say roughly one out of it, like every 10,000 residents needs kind of like a steward, like an earth steward. Um, and so there's 120,000 people. So let's say this was 12. The idea would be to hire 12 of these cultural ambassadors, community leaders, whatever you want to call them, flitters of the town. And you give them all a stipend. I think it has to be below what is taxable. So $10,800, because I don't think ultimately you can have this be a taxable thing because that feels so corrupt on a different level. Um, so I think that you can supplement that in other ways. Like if you give someone, I know 10,600 doesn't sound very much to a lot of people, but to an artist, $10,600, you can't give it all at once. I think there's a monthly allotment and I think you can include stuff with it. Maybe you can include a house or what, maybe that's too much, but you could include a stipend. You could include like $1,000 a month stipend to buy supplies to create a moment for your community. So it's a thousand dollars war chest. So whether, whatever you want to do, you want to host a block party, whatever it is, we just want to buy vegan donuts for your community and have a little town hall about gun violence. But I think having, I really think just if I could say one last thing, just like thinking about a nucleus of a dozen or so, whatever you want to call them, I got a lot of names and they're really fun, but that their job, they're perpetually empowered without a boss or a time clock without any forms or demands, just with a promise to make a social media trail. They'll promise to make a public trail. They'll, it, that's like, that's the main, yeah. Okay, I think I made my point. And thank you all again for doing this. Um, I would love to continue the conversation. And we're also having a monthly mixer at our space tomorrow. If anyone does want to come and see what we're up to, we do have a brick and mortar, now studios downtown Ann Arbor at five o'clock. Um, thank you, expressyourus.org. Thank you. And I do appreciate you clarifying that. I did. I think I did get a little bit lost in your energy and the poetry um, and, and missed the uh, specific point that you were making. So I appreciate you going back. Yeah. All right, Marianetta. Yes, I just had a, had a question. Um, I, I think Nick Casario asked if the funds were strictly for Ann Arbor. Um, but my question is, if an artist say from uh, Ipsy, uh, partnered, had an idea to partner with another artist in Ann Arbor to uh, do a project. Um, would that count, uh, that proposal count, or do, do all of the artists have to be, or, or businesses have to be directly in Ann Arbor? Is there no opportunity to partner with, um, with others? My guess is that there is some flexibility with that, but I, once again, I'm going to put Sky in the spot, and I apologize. I was hoping to let you sit back and relax, but I keep turning it over to you to answer some uh, questions. Uh, but what is your understanding of that? Is there some more flexibility than? I think there is some flexibility, but I think it needs to be clearly defined as whatever we mm -hmm. is decided, so that people understand what the parameters are. And so, um, yeah, if it's to benefit the greater Ann Arbor community or uh, organization, it's working in partnership with an organization in Ann Arbor. I think those things, those could be worked out. Um, but, you know, the city did receive these funds. The county received a different set of funds. The state received a different set of funds. And so I do think it's important that we 
primarily focus on the Ann Arborlands, um, but I but I do think that we can, if that is a recommendation coming out of this, that we need to think more broadly about our, our broader community. I think that's something that the city can take under advisement as we sort of build what the parameters are. Thank you. I, I just think that we, I, I know that there's limited funds, um, but um, the idea that we can build bridges, um, I think is really important. And so if, if there, there is some way to, um, to build, build those bridges, um, I'd like to see that happen. Excellent, thank you. All right, Jeff, you're up. Jeff, you can go ahead. Sorry, didn't unmute myself. Um, I must say that I sort of misunderstood uh, the parameters of this grant when I first signed on, or when I first you know came on board. It's very helpful to hear this conversation. But I have two questions, and and one of them is: Does the decision? to spend the ARPA funds rest solely with this commission? In other words, it's sort of a majority vote of this commission that determines how the expense, how, how the funds are to be allocated. That's the first question, but maybe you could comment on that first. Sure, um, and Vanita, correct me if I'm wrong, but this group is an advisory group. Mm -hmm. So how this will work um, is that this group will develop a recommendation about how the program should be shaped about the spending yes. of the funds. So the funds are there. It's just a matter of how we distribute them. Yes. And so we're looking at this. So tonight is really to help the Arts Commission develop that recommendation to then give the city council consider, and staff and staff will be helping shape it based on what the recommendation is that comes out of this group. So as I understand this, this commission will make a set of recommendations to be approved by city council. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So well, the next Scott, like, um, let me pause just for a second. Going back to Sky, would it go back to city council or is it something that staff would, would then kind of move forward with uh, based <clears throat> on a recommendation from this group? Yeah, it is a little confusing. So council has authorized the funds and has directed staff to build a program. But if it very if it sort of um, deviates significantly from sort of the parameters that council has sort of set out, we we would have a conversation internally about taking that back to council. Just if we feel like it's it's too if it's deviated too much, otherwise we would just be developing the program based on both the input from this group and also the guidance from leadership today. Uh, thank you. So. The next question is, I misunderstood, this seems to be a much longer uh, uh, grant process. I, I guess the funds have to be expended through 2026, is, is mm -hmm. that correct? Mm -hmm. So this is a really a long-term project. So how do you see the, the timeline working out, for example, before you're actually able to dispense some of the funds? Well, I think that's all to be determined. I mean, ideally, we'll be able to dispense the funds sooner rather than later. Um, you know, we heard tonight, you know, one of the messages is make it easy on people, make it easy on people. And that's kind of our hope, too. We don't want to be overly bureaucratic. I know that's our reputation, but we're trying to avoid that. Um, we do want to create something that's actually useful for people and something that is accessible to people. So I don't have an exact timeline to be specific about answering your question. Um, the hope is sooner rather than later. I would add to that, we are required to have determined how we are spending it by the end of 2024. The dollars don't have to be fully expended by until 2026, but we have to sort of basically know, we have to have a contract in place or have to know what that is gonna, how those dollars will be expended by the end of 2024. But then the dollars can, can lag up until the end of 2026. If, if needed, that doesn't have to happen. <laughs> yeah. Right, hopefully not. Uh, John, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, let me make a couple of observations first. Um, 
the passion we are hearing is so exciting. I mean, if we could put pedals in a bottle, I mean, we <laughs> could make a fortune selling pedals in a bottle on the street. Uh, so uh, hats off to everyone that's kind of come in and shared their passion. Uh, the second thing that strikes me is there's far greater a need than we have resources for. So, um, so I think how we strategically or how the city strategically uh, uh, shapes it uh, is going to be important. Um, and um, third, I think the thing that, that should come out of this certainly uh, resonated with me is the importance of the creative community. I mean, we just, we had a ton of ideas and they were all great ideas. And uh, it's important to, uh, to invest in those um, um, art makers you know, in our community. Uh, let me reflect on the, the four questions. Uh, what's the best way to access people? Um, I, I, I think that, um, uh, I think that what we have done this forum is great. Um, that in some of us are members of art organizations. I'm not one of them. Uh, but I think really the best way to access those people, and it's been discussed tonight, is through our organizations. And uh, I think the, the, the city might see this process for this particular COVID grant as helping build a network or the start of a network, how, uh, you know, the city should have uh, some way of getting to artists and, and art organizations so that maybe... Um, I think the best way to to, to find that, uh, I think something needs, we need to inventory needs and the best folks to do that are probably art organizations. Uh, as I think uh, 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 Darius and, 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 and Jerry mentioned that they all work through either collaboratives or something like that, some kind of an organization uh, as opposed to art commissioners. I mean, I have friends, I know, but I don't really know uh, the kind of strategic information the city should have. So um, I think that investing a little bit of, of this money in art organizations to, to um, uh, inventory the needs um, and would in effect help build a network that then um, uh, Vanita would have access to or the city would have access to so that you wouldn't have to come back to this thing if we ever need to do that again. Um, the um, how to prioritize art projects versus uh, trauma. Um, it strikes me that this money is coming from the COVID recovery. And so I think it's intended to be addressing trauma. And so um, I think that all of these projects could be shaped through that trauma lens. So that if um, uh, whoever wanted to bring a specific project or something like that, if, if that could be the lead, how is it going to address uh, trauma? Uh, either trauma in the creative community itself or trauma in the larger community through art. Um, and But I think that trauma, it, I don't think it should be competitive. I don't think it should be one over the other. I think it should be um, um, uh, together. It, 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 there should be a collaborative nature. So the, 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 the trauma addressed in individual projects. Um, and then... Um, uh, the um, individual versus uh, the art organizations. Um, I, I think um, we're hearing, you know, today, I mean, from some people that had some really strategic ideas, they came from art organizations. So that, you know, but I mean, the passion you know, and maybe Paddles is a part of an art organization. I think you might be. Uh, but in any event, uh, I, I think those folks, um, it, 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 shouldn't, it shouldn't be competing one against the other. Uh, possibly, um, I think someone mentioned it, that you go through an art organization to get an artist. So you task the organization with ensuring that artists get this kind of money. 
Um, visual work versus performance art. I mean, I'm a recovering artist. I did installation work. There's literally to me nothing, no difference. It's like, you know, the difference between realistic and 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 abstract. Uh, it's 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 the same. Uh, and it's 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 a false comparison for me. I mean, other people have you know sort of different approaches to it. So um, that would be um, my my sense about it. But I applaud everybody that has has come to this, and it was very exciting. And um, uh, all of our meetings should be like this. So thank you. Thank you. All right, it's almost 20 after. I see we have another hand raised, uh, which is Jerry. So let's go to Jerry. And then I'm going to try to do a quick um, summary and let you move on with your meeting because I know that you have other things to get to. Um, so Jerry, go ahead and I'll do my wrap up. And um, again, I'll just echo the words that have been said already that this has been great hearing from everybody tonight. Okay, Jerry, please go ahead. Hi. Um, again, I just want to thank you, especially John, for um, getting us back to reality um, in terms of what, me, what what a task it is for you to have to do this. So I, I just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, I just wanted to, again, echo also, I mean, the idea of this is COVID money. The idea of COVID is a trauma uh, that has been upon us and it's, it, it's a mark in time. And <clears throat> Artists like no other performing visual sound groups, there is no delineation of what an artist is, spoken word, silence, a hole in the wall, whatever it is. Um, maybe I'm just putting it out there, maybe starting with the premise, it is trauma, what we have done to our society. And how can, how can this $500,000 best express it through giving agency to all the artists in the community possible. Thank you. Okay, great. All right, just checking to make sure we have no other hands raised because I want to be able to make sure that people are able to get out any final thoughts. Um, Uh, Lauren, is it Lauren or Laura? Laura, just Laura. Really, two, really quick. I, I know you want to wrap up, but I had two thoughts. One is there, um, if someone has thoughts they wish to share, is there like an email or something that we should be using to send written comments in is my first question. And my second question is just a complete brainstorm I had when listening. And I don't even know if this would be possible. But one idea I had was when I was reading the, the slide about uh, it has to be non-recurring and there's all these reporting requirements. I'm wondering if, it, again, it's just a complete brainstorm, but what if there was some event that sort of celebrates coming out of this trauma or something like that? And then the way it was executed would be that, you know, you, somebody who's organizing it would just pay all these artists to participate, you know, the performers, the, the visual artists, whatever, like every, like you could have a big festival event or something yeah. like and it would be simplified how the payments would go because, the artist would just be paid to participate in some sort of big festival event that would be a one-time thing. So it was just a brainstorm idea. I understand it might not work at all, but just want to throw that into the mix. So yeah, my other question was just like, if we have more thoughts, who should we email? Yeah, that is a great question. I think you can email any one of us staff, but Vinita, might you be the best person? Because I think your name is on the um, Arts Commission website, but I am also happy to receive yeah, emails. I can share my email address and, and, and Heather, if you want to share yours as well. Um, that would be vharrison at a2gov.org. I'm the Public Art Commission liaison. So whatever you uh, forward to me, I normally share out with the commission as a whole so that they're aware of what's coming in. Um, we did have a few public comments that came in prior to this meeting. So I want to recognize those folks who did send um, their information to us ahead of time. Um, those items have been shared with the commission. If there's anything additional that you'd like to include, um, v Harrison at a2gov.org. And my email is similar in the sense that it's my first initial and last name at a2gov.org. So that's h cipherth at a2gov.org. And Sarah, I see that you have your hand raised. 
Yes, I just wanted to say thank you again so much to the members of the public that have joined us. And um, again, all of our public art meetings, they are public and you can join anytime, any of these meetings. And um, you can find the schedule on the Ann Arbor Public Art Commission website. Um, so please feel free to join. Um, if you have ideas uh, to come to these meetings, this is the my most favorite meeting I think we've ever had uh, because we have members of the public. We have such a great energy. This is such a special community. And, um, you know, something that really resonated with me tonight is that artists want to create, artists want to perform. So when we're talking about new projects, um, that's really something that kind of came to the forefront, whether that's an individual artist or an arts organization. But um, to echo again what people have been saying, artists know how to rebuild the community, right? When there's devastation, there's a time for renaissance and artists know how to lead the way. So a lot of these ideas have centered around new projects and revitalizing our com arts community here. And I'm just so thankful um, for all of your comment and um, we are definitely going to take all of this into consideration and please email additional ideas. Thank you so much, everyone. And Sophie, did you have a thought? Yeah, I just wanted to thank Deb Pollich for her work in making sure that the arts community was recognized and received funds because uh, I think she definitely made a difference. Yeah, and that's one of the things that I wanted to, um, oh, Deb, you have your hand up if you wanted to respond. I'm sorry, Deb. Hold on, hold on, Deb. Are you still there? <laughs> sorry, it's weird because you can't just hit the unmute button. Yes. You got to wait for another thing. <clears throat> um, there, thank you, Sophie. That was very kind of you. Um, as we all know, none of us work alone, and um, you know we have a team here at Creative Washington, and then there's the team of people throughout the community. Um, I think we'll, you'll know that that in the early process of this ARPA um, funding and how to spend that original 2.200, I'm sorry, $24.2 million, the arts community and people that were consumers of the arts as well jumped in. So um, Petals and I, uh, you know, we rallied troops for sure, but everybody else rallied their troops too. And um, the fact that there's a half a million dollars to be spent um, from the ARPA funding on this very important sector, um, that does all the things you guys have talked about tonight. I think everybody should pat themselves on the back and applaud each other for everything that they do to make this happen. Thank you. Yeah, and with that, I do I do think you should applaud yourselves right now because you were influential over this process and you did change the trajectory of it. So, um, well, it's never enough money, but um, but we it's a starting point. So yeah, take a moment to applaud, snap, sing, whatever you want to do. Huzzah. <laughs> um, so you can rejoice in that. Again, I know it's not enough money, but we are we are starting something here and this could eventually be a model program. Um, some of the themes that I heard tonight, I started doing a little ad hoc flip charting. and I just can't help myself. It's kind of a throwback to the pre-COVID days when I actually used to write on paper in front of a group of people. But um, I started writing some notes about some important themes. Um, one of the themes is elevate the importance of the artist community. Um, and that this process can be, it can be um, a really important step in that. Um, historically, um, art has been um, central to Ann Arbor's identity. So it's kind of getting that back, reclaiming that and really uplifting the artist community. Um, don't be overly prescriptive about this. Allow for the artist community to drive this effort. Allow for joy. That was a theme that came through in various ways with what people said. Um, not only um, allow for joy, but in fact, let it thrive, like really foster it. Um, don't kill the spirit of artists, basically. <laughs> um, you know, we want a program that's not, you know, squashing people's spirits. Um, build bridges is another theme. Um, address trauma throughout everything, and that's something that art can do. Um, go through art organizations to get to artists. Um, and avoid false comparisons that there's no real delineation of what an artist is. 
Um, and then do the most bang for a buck, which is in fact what we're hoping to do. And there were some ideas and this is not an exhaustive list. So I apologize if I missed some of the ideas here, but one is to do a memorial. Um, community build is another idea. Cultural ambassadors, build a mm -hmm. network, um, do an inventory of needs, shape projects through a trauma lens and do a celebration of coming out of COVID. So those were just a few of the ideas that were shared tonight. And we do have this meeting recorded, so we will certainly capture all of the ideas that were shared. Um, so we are just about at 8.30. Again, I wanna thank everybody who came out tonight to share your thoughts. Help <coughs> um, we are really happy to have you here. Um, and it's always exciting to me to see um, civic engagement work. So again, thank you for being here and sharing your thoughts tonight. So I guess but if there's no other final thoughts that people want to get out there on this topic, I'll let you move on with your meeting. Thank you. Thank Heather. you, Heather. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm not seeing any hands. So we're going to move on to approval of um, our minutes from our May meeting and those have been delayed. Those will be presented at the August meeting and we will go over those. So um, we will move on then to old business. Vanita, do we have anything? I don't have anything for we old business. Yet. Yeah. Okay, so then we are going to move on to another special presentation that we're having tonight um, from Heather Martin, who is joining us um, tonight to talk about uh, the Reclaim Courthouse presentation. Again, Heather Martin was the founding director of Youth Arts Alliance. Heather, you have the floor and thank you for joining us. Heather? I'm here. I'm just clicking through buttons. Thank you so much um, for sharing some time. Hello, everyone. Um, hi, Mary. Um, it's wonderful to be here with you all. And I have to admit, it's my, it's my son's birthday today. And I'm here to, to talk about an exciting um, project with a lot of organizations involved and it's also very exciting that he's asleep right now despite a piece of chocolate cake the size of his head and um laser tag and video games but i'm here we did it we celebrated um so um if it's possible i could share some slides with everyone um i, I can pull up my screen here that will help me kind of if the host could give me permission. Is that still me? <laughs> I can yeah. give you permission. Yeah. Sorry. Um, hold on just a moment. I'm promoting you to panelist and then. I think we might have lost her. Oh, no. oh there, she, there she is. She's back. All right. One more step in here. Um, no, um, sorry. You know what? It's okay. Oh no, it's it's coming. You should be able to do it now. Okay, let's see. Okay, can everyone see that? Okay, awesome. So, um. To tell you a little bit of history about this project, um, about a year ago, um, uh, Judge Vandenberg at the Washtenaw County Court approached, um, approached me about um, displaying some artwork in a hallway there at the court. And of course, um, knowing all of the incredible organizations that are tied into arts and advocacy and um, music and culture makers here in town, um, I knew that there would be potential for a much larger project, which led to a presentation 
to all of the judges um, in Washtenaw County who unanimously approved what is now a multi-layered, multidisciplinary um, project titled Reclaim, which is a takeover of the municipal court building on Main Street on each level of the court building. Um, Reclaim st stands for Rooted Exhibition, um, Community, Love, Abundance, Intergenerational, Multiplicity. Um, so you can imagine that this town loves acronyms. And of course, with that mouthful, um, we need one. And really, the values of this project are around being inclusive of organizations who are doing work to mitigate the harm of the criminal legal system, and also artists, activists, culture makers who are tied into uplifting visionary ideas of what a system of care and healing could be. And so as um, the founding director of Youth Arts Alliance, I've been doing work in what I call healing-centered, most folks say trauma-informed, um, work for the last 15 years in the county and in Southeast Michigan and Michigan um, at large. We have a organizing body of folks. Let me take a breath a second. Whew, it's been a day. I mean, you all are very kind and you smile in your profile pictures and you're still attentive. So um, I've been running. Okay, so this is a really exciting project that um, uh, your colleague, Commissioner um, Jamal Bufford is involved in, representing My Brother's Keeper and Formula 734. Jenny Jones is joining us here in this meeting and she will be offering um, some insight to questions, who is a local musician, co-executive director of Title Track, an organization of youth empowerment, um, uh, water equity, racial equity. Um, Rod Wallace, who is the co-executive director of Amplify Project, as well as um, a visionary over at Grove Studios and also um, managing director of Upward Bound at Eastern Michigan University. So in January, we began working on the structure of this project and the multiple layers of involvement for community organizations and artists. Um, we just had a gathering of over 35 organizations, artists, um, performers, um, and this is just the initial layer of interest for folks who want to be a part of this exhibit. So I think I always like lose my breath um, talking about this because um, most for the most part of the last year, I was whispering about it. This is truly unprecedented. This is an arts and culture and ad advocacy activist takeover of a municipal space in our county. Um, the intention is to, to really complicate um, narratives um, around um, the court building, understanding the complexity of that space beyond criminal legal action, but also thinking about all of the activities that happen at the court. You know, there's the abuse neglect docket, there's, um, there's folks um, approaching benches around guardianship. There's um, all sorts of reasons that folks come into that building. And for any of you who have spent time in the building, um, it's a pretty cavernous um, space with lots of marble and wood. And it really invites color and art and immersion. And so what this looks like is a series, there are three layers. There's the first layer of what will be fixed and permanently installed for the, the two months that we are exhibiting and, and sort of activating the space. So we will fill the walls, we will 
hang um, luminaries and three-dimensional works um, from the ceilings of court rooms. Um, we are also coordinating a series of concerts and performances and movement, um, uh, sort of guerrilla theater alongside. So that's a secondary layer, which is what will be performed and have concert in this municipal space. And then the third layer is around programming, workshops, civic education, um, engaging the general public in the act of making or learning or growing alongside of some of the efforts of organizations and artists and community. And so um, we have really big um, goals here. We'll be running the project, we'll be installing the project at the end of August, running the bulk of programming um, concerts in the month of September, and then October we'll have some quiet events and, and keep exhibited works up. The intention of this project is that we're having a transparent budget process, which means that the money that we've secured for the project so far is coming from um, the Michigan Arts Coun Culture Council, MAC, um, and Arts Midwest, as well as Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation. Um, so right now we are, um, we are seeking additional funds because the only thing that's preventing us from bringing the project to the scale of involvement of those interested is resource for the project. So we will be paying artists for their efforts alongside this project, musicians, um, uh, audio visual. We will be having installations, for example, of local organization Black Men Read um, will have um, local leaders reading children's books outside, for example, the abuse neglect court, the courtroom that sees those cases, they'll be streaming that on a wall outside of the courtroom with wireless headphones. Um, there are many different layers. The Amplify, Amplify project is doing a 16 um, Sound, recorded sound library that folks will be able to mix and listen to of different leaders talking about issues and his, their own personal histories. Um, the list goes on and on. So essentially what happens as you enter the court building, as many of you know, is that your phones are removed, your keys are put into the locker along with your belongings, and you enter a space without any distraction, right? Um, and so there's a lot of possibility for full engagement because if there's one thing that folks are doing at the court um, universally, it's waiting. It's sitting and waiting for very big and often dramatic news, right? Or um, transitional news in folks' lives. So, so we're thrilled about this project. You know, this idea of rooted exhibition has to do with the fact that all of the organizations and folks involved are rooted to the values of the project. That everyone who's, who is contributing is paid equitably for their contributions. So what does that look like in the landscape of Washtenaw County? It means smaller organizations with smaller budgets will get a bigger piece of the pie. Folks who have grants that they're enacting through their involvement of the project will use the resources they have on hand to continue to promote their mission. But I think, you know, oftentimes in Youth Arts Alliance, um, we put equal value in the process and the procedure of doing something together as the end product. So this will certainly be a remarkable exhibition. Um, the curation of artwork um, coming from artists and organizations will be incredible. The audio visual installations, the immersive installations in this space um, are going to be, like I described before, unprecedented 
in a municipal space like this. Um, but I really think that the most healing centered part of this project is the collective of organizations, which really for our initial meeting at 35 organizations and artists is the first layer of folks who are interested in being involved. And it just, it, it makes a lot of sense. You know, I spoke before with Sarah and Sophie about some of the, the needs beyond resource are what does it mean for a project like this to be coming across the radar of national news outlets, right? We're getting a lot of different attention on this project. And to be honest with you, um, me and every, and the sort of leading group, we, we're no strangers to um, publicity for the work that we do as artists or organizations. I'll say that we need help local help through um, the, the commission, through other resources to make sure that while we're amplifying this, this project that we're doing it in the best way possible. How do we share about the power of Washtenaw County to have such a diverse array of organizations and artists who are attacking a very important issue, right? So how is arts and culture interwoven into our exploration of how systems change can happen in a really restorative way for community. Um, I think that they are directly tied to one another. I think the folks who are, who are coming together as part of this project um, are remarkable and, and really long vetted community members here. Um, I think, I think I had too much chocolate cake and I'm sort of also feel my blood sugar dropping and I'm not quite sure what else to say. I, I can say that, um, I can say that it was remarkable to gather with everyone just last week, knowing that everyone who came into the space with ideas and vision in this project also articulated another handful of people that they would like to see come into the project and be involved. Um, we have local school districts who are interested in doing tours. Okay, so this is another, so think about this like deeply, right? So a classroom comes into this space, they have exposure to multidisciplinary arts, right? Multimedia arts. They're coming into civic education and knowledge about what this building is, what happens here, what are ideas circulating in the creative community around it. And I'm in the position alongside Jamal, Rod, Jenny, and Desiree Simmons, who's the co-executive director of Interfaith Council for Peace and Justice, who's also a lead organizer on this project. Um, you know, we're all in the difficult position of truly the only thing preventing us from expansive involvement of the project as a whole is resource. And we're scrappy, we're artists, you know, we always figure it out. Um, but the ease of having folks involved in a way that's, that has enough people power to run docent tours, to make sure that there's bridges between audiences, these performances um, that will happen in music, are intentionally driven in partnership to have intergenerational audience, difference of audience, who would show up to see one group versus another group in this county? How do we bridge that gap and have both audiences come into space to see multiple performers? How do we do call and response to encourage dialogue between creatives and mediums? So um, just stop me. <laughs> and then I can answer questions, maybe, or I'm just gonna mute myself. Heather, I don't wanna cut you off at all. I, um, no, please, Allison, super I've never met you, but please cut me off. No! It's, no, it sounds super exciting, and um, I love your passion about the project. Um, the more you talk about it, the more cool it sounds. Um, and all you did was sell me online to be a part of it. Um, I work for 
the Guild of Artists and Artisans, which um, puts on the Ann Arbor Summer Art Fair. And we do A2 Arttoberfest, which happens in October um, on the streets that surround the county building. So um, our gallery space is on um, 4th, right behind the county building there. Um, so we would be a cultural ally for you within that neighborhood to spread the word, you know, give you more spaces for engagement, more events where we could potentially engage. Um, so I'll definitely uh, be reaching out to you after today's meeting. Um, don't have any money to offer you, unfortunately, but can give you some more manpower and potentially some more organization power to make the project happen. Jenny, uh, you yeah, want to let, Jenny, I saw yeah. your hand. Are you coming to the rescue? Yeah, I just want to make sure I can be heard. Can anyone hear me? Can everyone hear me? All right, yes. awesome. Yep. So I appreciate the energy that Heather has brought, even though she's had a full day with her six-year-old, enjoying so many things. So Heather, I appreciate you um, being on here. And I also I appreciate um, this entire commission's um, ability to listen and be excited. And I cannot say enough about pedals just as a former discussion point, but just amazing. But with regard to this particular project, um, the other aspect that um, is kind of alluding to, but not necessarily mentioned, I will say is that particularly on Main Street, there are a lot of things that go on. Um, you know, people are having cocktails, people are having dinner, prom, prom dates are happening, you know, people are riding bikes, eating ice cream, all this stuff. And all these lives are changed almost at the end of the street. And I feel like people just don't have a realization. They see it as a courthouse, it's a marble building. There's a lot of different things going on. But um, I, uh, just as a side note, I am a board member for um, Amplify Project, but also a board member for the ARC. And they have been wanting to do and be of use in some way. And they are also an organization on Main Street. And so to bring um, a realization to lives changing in a building that is, to me, very sterile and just needs, definitely needs some more love and some more art, but also needs to um, have a story told within it. And just to know that there are a lot of organizations um, in Ipsy and in Ann Arbor in Washtenaw County that were just jumping out of their skin last week to just try and figure out like the dream was just so big. And the idea of, I think there was one of the artists who came who said, I just, I just need to leave right now because I just need to go home and dream and plan. Cause this is just amazing to be able to, to think of all the things that could be done and all the stories that could be told. Because of something like this, I think it is imperative and important that as many community people know as possible, people that are just visiting for the week in September or October, um, but to have people have a realization that this is going on, I think is almost, maybe not almost as important as, as funding. Um, but I am kind of getting tired of hearing all these people say, you know, what did you do this weekend? And it's like, well, I went to this exhibit and all these things happen and they're like, well, I didn't see anything about it. I don't want to hear that about this project. Like I really do want to make sure that people are aware of this artistry that will be happening, this connection that's happening um, within this county. It is so important um, because it's just an endless, it's such a huge idea, but I want it to come to fruition because I want people to be aware of the struggles that people have in this community that aren't being acknowledged, but also the artistry and the giftings that they have. It's tremendous. And to see that small group of people last week come together and just be so copious with their note taking, oh my God, and just so willing to just collaborate. It is a blessing and it's a gift. And so um, even if the, the finances may not be there within this group, I totally understand. I really want um, there to be awareness of this art that will be happening in this space. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Jenny, that sparked an idea that I um, just want to connect you guys with the Main Street Area Association. Um, Sandra runs that group and they are doing Saturday, I don't know if it's just Saturday morning or Saturday during the days when the streets are closed. 
um, through the summer activations of the space for arts groups, yoga, whatever. Um, so that might fall within your timeline as a way to activate and, and kind of promote what's going on down at the courthouse on Main Street. Thank you, Allison. Sophie, I think you had your hand up. Uh, yes, yes. I was going to say that there are, there are some many unique aspects to this uh, project. Uh, three of the most extraordinary, perhaps, are the, um, the fact that it's inside the courthouse, which must be pretty rare. I mean, you might get a statue of some old white guy, probably, but in most courthouses, but nothing much beyond that in terms of art, let alone live contemporary art that challenges the actual events of the courthouse. So that's incredible. And the next unique thing and amazing thing is the unanimous support of the judges, which is um, pretty mind blowing in itself. And the third thing which I found extraordinary, unique and wonderful was the fact that the artists are receiving payment, um, uh, let alone equitable payment. So those are all wonderful things. Um, an amazing thing. So I really applaud you for getting this this going, having the idea and getting it going. It's really, really incredible. Um, but one aspect I was just thinking when uh, Jenny was talking about how to make sure people know that it's happening, which is obviously, if, if something this amazing is happening, clearly we want people to know about it. And I was just looking at that photo of the, the slide with um, the Washington County Courthouse and it has this huge pale wall, which just cries out for some sort of sonne lumiere, um, some slide projection, something moving, so that people can can be aware that there's there's a thing happening there. So I wonder if something like that could be maybe added in. Yeah, we have soy pasted dreams. We're planning on um, adhering something to the exterior. We'll also, thank you, Sophie. We're also planning to have um, a lot of vinyl stickering in the windows. So um, works of poetry from local youth um, artists, um, the untold stories of liberation and love poetry group based in Ipsy is interested in putting some poetry on, on windows as well. We, we have the capability with vinyl and different adhesives to, to go on the marble walls. But we also are going to be taking a lot of advantage of sort of the cavernous overhead space of the building and suspending things from the ceiling, thinking about immersive um, of I realized that I only showed the first slide of a multi-slide presentation. So I'll be sending it on. I'll just, I will circle back with that. But thank you, Sophie. Um, and, and thank you, Allison. I think this is about, you know, that's the beautiful thing, like um, case in point in this meeting, folks, you know, this is the piece about multiplicity, right? You know, which is one of these values is all the roles we hold in community that you all are on the commission and you also hold a multitude of roles as artists yourselves, as affiliations to galleries, as connections to organizations. And I think that's what has driven the success of the project so far. And I think that um, the scale of the project will be determined by resource. I will say that I'm not as understanding as Jenny around financial support. Um, I think it would be a really big miss for the, the City of Ann Arbor Public Art Commission to miss an opportunity for investment here. Um, I think that would be noticed. Um, and, um, and I think, I think this is about public art because this is about municipal space. And I think that when we think about public art and, um, and where it's installed or, and who has access to it, and we think about placing immersive art in a municipal building where so many of our neighbors and so many folks in community are coming into this building for so many different reasons, I mean, what an opportunity for engagement with public art, what an opportunity for multidisciplinary and mixed media. Um, and so um, I just, I feel like this is a really um, expansive and generative opportunity for so many artists and orgs and so many people 
and school age kids who can come into the space and engage with all of this. Thank you, Heather. And Lynn, I think you had your hand up and then Mary. I wanted to share, I don't know if folks saw um, a Politico article that came out last summer after uh, Ann Arbor, um, the city council had passed a, a resolution supporting an unarmed crisis response program. Um, and then that we ended up funding it with ARPA dollars. Um, once that resolution was passed April of last year, there was an article that came out in Political following a local family and um, how they've been in and out of the justice system. It was uh, how a liberal Michigan town is putting mental illness at the center of police reform. And it follows Cynthia Harrison and her son, Anthony. Um, I got to know her after that was published and uh, Ann Arbor resident now running for city council. But what was really um, moving was how she called me the day that um, the judge was signing his release papers at that court. And like when you when you're saying that um, there are these decisions that impact generations um, and just that that anxiety and that weight to make sure that her son would get the treatment that he needed um, and have, and having the support of different community advocates to get to that point and needing a national um, spotlight on these struggles um, that particularly affect black men in our community was really revealing you know it's and and to hear that um, you know there can be artwork that can really express that kind of turmoil um, but also hopefully uplift communities in a way and give comfort um, would be really, I mean, it's, 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 I'm hoping that it's a reflection of how um, we can respond in, 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 a, in a manner that, um, I guess, acknowledges what kind of, what happens at the courthouse. Um, so I, I've been hearing a lot about this work. I know Judge Vanderbilt really well and and judicial uh, attorney Kareen Moore. Um, she was uh, on the live, I recruited her to the library board. Um, so, you know, I, I think it really, it really shows when you have uh, a judge with an MSW <laughs> who is you know, rallying around this project because she understands intimately what, what um, trauma, what a trauma informed approach to um, justice work can look like, how, what it should look, look like. So um, I'm, it's, this is really this is a really difficult project. You're you're tying together community engagement, um, you know, innovative approaches from individual artists, um, tying together different funders. So you know, kudos for you for stringing this all together. I I haven't heard of a project like this in our community in in a while. So um, but maybe it's because I'm just new to to the art world. So. I'm just really impressed. I'm really proud to be able to go back to my friend Cynthia and say, like, hey, you know, maybe the next sh should should there be a time, and hopefully not soon. You know, uh, you're back in this courthouse. There'll be you. You won't be alone. You know, there'd be there'd be something for you. So I'm really moved by this project, and I, I'm really thankful that you've, you're working on it. Thank you, Lynn and uh, Mary. Yeah, hi, um, Heather. I wouldn't expect anybody else but you to be spearheading this dynamic opportunity. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Um, good to see you here and um, to hear comments from everybody about this. Um, I'm new to the council again um, after a few year hiatus, and I'm actually just to the council. Do we actually have money to give out? Um, this was something that we did not have before um, we had a lot of people that would come with proposals and petitions, but do we have financial and dollars? We do. To we do. We voted on it yeah. twice. We, it's <laughs> such, such a reality, reality that we had to vote on it twice. <laughs> okay. So, all right. All right. Real. All right. All right. Well, well, someone will fill me in because um, there's, there's lots, lots of questions. Well, and that's actually something I wanted to ask about because we do have some funds. I believe that we put aside for marketing. Um, we were thinking of marketing the Golden Paintbrush Award. So we have some funds, and Vanita, please correct me if I'm wrong, that we've already pulled out and are potentially ready to disperse. 
somewhere. Very good. Uh, yeah, so we pulled them out specifically oh. for marketing and told the community foundation mm -hmm. that's what we were using them for. Okay. We could get creative with how that happens, but that's right. what we told them we were using it for. Well, and we could help with marketing this event. I mean, it do, this doesn't have to necessarily be marketing for Golden Paintbrush, but part of, I think, you know, what, what we're trying to help achieve here is getting the word out um, as well as funding um, and, you know, kind of networking to see if there are additional funding opportunities outside of this commission. But I do think personally that it would be great to help in some marketing efforts with, with that money that we've set aside for that purpose. Uh, the second point I wanted to touch on is documentation. Is that a barrier for this event that you can't have cell phones, video, anything going on inside the courthouse? Um, what what does that look like in terms of like getting the word out, sharing what's happening um, while this event is happening? Yeah, that's a great question. So <clears throat> I will say, I think, um, Mary, also thank you. So Mary was one of the first muralists to work with Youth Arts Alliance back in 2014. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, just to say a little bit more about my history, we've been doing, Youth Arts Alliance has been doing programming in carceral spaces um, since 2013. And so really taking sort of carceral or untraditional spaces, municipal spaces, enacting arts, culture, music, um, programming, activity, workshops, exhibition, performance is sort of what, um, um, what my career has been and, and sort of still is. And so um, documentation is actually, we have a re we have really beautiful opportunities. So as Sophie mentioned, you know, um, I'll tell you, um, presenting to all of the judges in Washtenaw County was a certain um, anxiety. And you could really say to yourself that they're not judging you, but you would be lying because that's what they do. And um, so in that, part of the unanimous support is also, I think, reflective of the people power and the amount of institutional partnership and frankly, trust around the work that we've been doing in community. Um, what we've been given access to and what we plan to do is we're partnering with um, Cultureverse um, locally, who is going to do like a full building scan of the, of the courthouse um, prior to installation and then a full scan once the installation happens. Now, obviously, permissions on live um, video and all of those things are lining up. Um, we do have permission to have access to the closed caption footage of just for capturing the before and after um, of sort of the blank building and then the after of with everything in it. Um, because court proceedings have been throughout the pandemic live streamed um, by and large and, and folks have been given access through Zoom, um, the judges have given permission for live streaming to audiences for specific events. In terms of documentation around, um, you know, in the day-to-day -day operations of the court, the business hours, 8.30 to 4.30, we're going, it, that's going to be a real challenge. When it comes to the evening events that we're coordinating, um, the specific general audience engagement, um, I think we'll be able to capture that with ease and media permissions. We're, we're holding this delicate, you know, there's, the benefit of having so much, so many folks involved in the project is that we are thinking deeply and intentionally every step of the way around ethics, humility in space, understanding the complexity of the space, and also offering a lot of narrative, a lot of counter narrative and, and sort of vision within that space, if that makes sense. So this is, this is delicate. And we're thinking through every every sort of stage and documentation is critical 
throughout this because the intention of the collective of folks who is involved, you know, I think this is, I, I mean, I'll say, I think this is ARPA eligible. I think that this collective of folks working on this project is also interested in collaborating in this way in perpetuity. I don't think, I think this us coming together and in, in, and having integrated and multi-layer engagement with one another as organizations, as artists, as musicians, I see this, um, folks have expressed interest in moving forward with this in different ways. What does it mean to take over a DMV, you know? <laughs> What does it mean to do a immersive public library installation? How do we enact, how do we enact um, community and audience for all of the things happening that are so positive, resources that are available? Um, but it's 9.05. So I'm just like time checking myself. And also I know that you have had public comment and everyone's been really grateful the whole time for all of that but I also know that there's an end of public comment you know like a necessary end so I don't want to keep you past your time and I'm happy to I you know the um Jamal Jenny is here I'm here you know Rod and and Desiree and other community partners are interested in talking further we could follow up with questions I'll share the presentation um that would be fantastic, Heather. If you want to send that presentation to Vanita, she can share it with all of us. And, um, you know, thank you so much for your time tonight, especially after your son's birthday party. And thank so, you. Ken. Don't ever tell him. I, like, <laughs> play, don't tell him I'm playing it like it was like a punishment. You know how these things go. Listen, I, I enjoyed the whole day. It's just very busy. You know, we did the whole thing. We just did the whole thing. I mean, like, I love him and his birthday is joy. But we were bike riding, you know, laser tech, you know. Anyway, yes. Thank you. Um, thank you, Heather. Yes, this is such thank a special you, project. Oh, perfect. Bye. Thank you. Okay. All right. So um, we are going to move on to report from staff. Vanita, you have the floor. Yeah, I just had the two staff updates there. Um, nothing additional for them. Just giving you some updates on where we are for those two items. Yes, those are exciting updates. Um, yeah. Vanita, can you verbalize the two items for those of us who don't have the agenda in front of us and those that oh, are yeah. joining us? Um, like so I don't have version. it in front of me either, but I have to apologize. I, I had an update Vanita. from Give365. Um, she's working with Te Teona, I believe is the right way to say her name, to um, work with our building department to get some additional ideas of where she should start and how she should move that forward. Um, they want to make sure that um, they have the ability to do the things that they need in the space that they, the location that they want to use. Um, and what was my other item? I'm sorry. I've been engrossed in all this other stuff. I had some. Yeah, Ann Arbor Art Center. The oh, yeah. um, Alley Project, yeah. Oh, yeah, Alley Project. Um, I may have mixed those around. Alley Project is the same. That was just an update that we had gotten from um, the building department to say that um, we received some information from the a Ann Arbor Arts Center that they were having some stumbling blocks with what they were working on, but they've been forwarded over to um, staff and community uh, services to help them move that forward. Um, I, that update was probably about, uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago. I hadn't reached back out to get an additional update, but I, sh I could share something back out with you all later on that too. That would be great. Yep. Thank you, Vanita. You're welcome. Yeah. All right. And then we Thank have, you, Vanita. Yes. you're welcome. Um, Report from committees. Um, so the Capital Improvement Project Working Group, um, that is myself and Allison right now. And um, if anyone else wants to join, because David has, uh, you know, has resigned um, from the commission, uh, we have an open spot. 
So uh, I don't have anything additional to add um, besides, you know, what we sort of discussed um, last meeting about getting some of those budget items approved, um, which is wonderful from council. Um, and we're going to continue to work on that. And John, I see that you've unmuted yourself. If you have something to add. No, okay. no, no, I have nothing to add. Thank you, though. All right. <laughs> Accidentally unmuted myself. Okay. <laughs> well, and so again, if anyone would like to join the Capital Improvement Project Working Group, please do, because we have an open spot. Um, and then I'm going to move on to the Outreach Working Group, which is Sophie, Peggy, and Marionetta. Anything to report? Um, I, I guess I can um, maybe go, kind of go very, very quickly. Um, and then I'll have to leave. I have to pick up someone from from uh, the bus station. Um, the outreach group decided that uh, we wanted to explore um, some uh, potential partnerships with art related organizations um, like uh, the library and uh, Parks and Rec, and also to build uh, connections with kind of upcoming uh, events that might be happening in Ann Arbor. For instance, we found out that Monument Lab, uh, the uh, museum um, is hosting a residency for two years for the founder of Monument Lab. And we thought, well, you know, might be a good idea to, to have some conversations. So we've started a series of conversations with uh, various arts related organizations um, in Ann Arbor, and our first conversation was May 17th. We met with Eli uh, Nyberger, who's the director of the library, to talk about ways that we might uh, build bridges between the Arts Commission and the library. And he was very excited about the idea, um, had lots of I ideas about um, ways that we, we might um, partner. Um, he, he offered the... Uh, the notions that the library itself could be sites for projects or performances or exhibits. Um, it could be venues for public meetings. Uh, so uh, for instance, um, nonprofits or any city or governmental entities could meet uh, in person at the library if we found we needed to meet as a big group. He also said that he would, they, the library would be very happy to help us in promoting uh, and publicizing any of our events, uh, particularly helping us. They, he says they do call for artists all the time. So um, as we think about this new funding, for instance, if we've got a call out, um, he said that the library would be very helpful, uh, be happy to help us with um, things like that. One of the things that he also brought up in terms of thinking about partnerships is the library hosts these uh, summer games every every summer. Uh, it's a very, very popular event. It's uh, participants of all ages from adults to, to children. And it's, it's basically uh, the participants get a set of clues um, and solve puzzles. And as you solve these, these puzzles, you are able to kind of cash in on, on prizes from the Ann Arbor Library. And so he was suggesting that perhaps we might think about ways, the Art Commission might think about ways, um, they've already got plans for, the, for this summer, but for summer 2023, that, um, and they'll start planning for that in the fall, that there might be ways that we might um, highlight arts uh, in the city um, maybe in some of the clues in the summer games. So, um, and I'm sorry to, to interrupt Marionetta, but we are actually in the summer's summer games. That oh, was going to yeah, be nice great. report for communication. Okay, I don't know that and that. I, Yeah, so um, we're finalizing the copy for the, the script for the clues, but we have um, some spots, including one of our manhole covers. Or, oh, I'm not supposed Fabulous. to say that. Oh, no. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to say that. Oh, Sorry, so I didn't we're, say we're... anything. Um, <laughs> so we're going to be Great. in it. <laughs> well, I'm, glad that, I'm glad that we're, we're already uh, way ahead of, ahead of us. So, so we left the conversation uh, 
both on a very, very positive note. Uh, what we decided to do was um, Eli was going to identify a library liaison. And um, he asked that we identify a liaison from the Arts Commission just to kind of keep the communications open. So there's uh, Molly Bickley, who's on the staff, and she's in charge at, at the Library of uh, Public Events, will be their liaison. And then once we identify someone as a liaison, um, Eli will put the two together. So I'm very excited. Uh, about building these bridges. And um, Peggy and Sophie are also working on uh, building bridges with um, Parks and Rec and having a conversation with them and also having a conversation with Monument Lab. So we are very excited about uh, reaching out to our community partners and figuring out ways that we can help each other. I, I can send, Benita, I will send you the, the notes from that outreach meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Marionetta. Sorry, um, you got to go and kick, pick up someone, but this was a great meeting. Nice to tonight. meet you, Marionetta. Oh, nice to meet you. I look forward. <laughs> welcome welcome to, the, to the commission. Thank you. Um, all right, so next uh, we are moving on to the special projects working group, which includes Sophie, Peggy, <clears throat> myself, and Jamal. Um, do we have anything to report? <laughs> Would anyone like, I, I think we haven't met since our last meeting, but yeah. if you have anything you'd like to add, Sophie. Yeah, well, generally at the, the, the meeting, we were talking with uh, Heather. Um, do I mean Heather? Uh, about the the thing we were just hearing about, the Reclaim project. So we, we talked about that a lot. But one of the things we've been talking about on the, um, on the commission uh, is about something which I'd like to connect up with the uh, ARPA money discussion, which is the two main things. One is having somewhere on our website where people can just simply propose things. And clearly we've heard that it needs to be very simple and uh, that people should be able to propose their own specific project they want to do as an artist or as a group or maybe somebody should be able to propose someone else as being a chicken or court jester or whatever it happens to be uh, that they think should be supported. So any proposal, we should make it clear that it's totally broad and just try and gather some information so we could take it somewhere. Um, and the other idea that I think, again, would fit in with, uh, with what we were just talking about on the upper money is the idea of a residency. So a residency could be a very traditional thing um, where, you know, an artist comes and there's equipment they can use and they do something inspired by the community they've, they're in while they do the residency. But it also could be something completely different. Um, so, you know, I think we should, we should try and make clear that we want people to be able to think broadly and... Uh, one of the the aspects we've been looking we've been talking about all the time is trying to make things connect with the community and be collaborative so i think those should be kind of something that we would look to specifically but without again rejecting some if some individual artist has an amazing idea sure why not so uh, i think being broad and open and easy to apply to and then you can find other ways of, of figuring out whether it would work for us, whether to take it further, whether it's through a phone interview or whatever it is. Um, so to make it make it pretty simple and not involve too much box filling. Thank you so much, Sophie. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Benita, but we already have on our website a place for people to put proposals. Is that correct? Does that still exist? Mm -hmm. I was looking at that. We've done some changes to the, the, the homepage for the city. We did at one point have 
um, a line item within our page where folks could actually submit proposals. I can't get there just yet right now, and I have to double check, but I think there's some, been some changes to our page in general just because of a new SharePoint platform, but I'll have to double check. But we did have it available once, yes. And, um, and I'm not sure, it, I'm not sure we'd have to redesign it just a little bit if you want to include that there. Um, and if that's still okay with the way that um, Heather and Sky want to move the ARPA funding up forward, yes. Well, I think Sophie, it, correct me if I'm wrong, you're just saying in general, you want would like that to be on our website for people to apply, not necessarily specifically for ARPA funding, but in general, if they want to engage with us and put together proposals, we should have a spot for them to do that. Is that what you're saying, Sophie? Or are you saying specifically for ARPA? I, was, I would say that we need both. And whether you start in the same thing and, and drop into the right funnel later, or whether we... You know, we need to have a discussion about how to make it um, something that people think, oh, I could do that. Uh, how to make it very visible and obvious and, you know, hey, this is here, and then publicize it so that, you know, people know to go look for it. Um, but these are all things that we need to, to talk about specifically, I think, that, to how to make it work, both for the ARPA funding and in general. Thank you, Sophie. Um, all right, we can move on to the communications working group, which is myself, uh, Marionetta and Allison. And we do have another opening um, on the communications working group. So if anyone is interested, please join. And um, yeah, the only piece of news was we are going to participate in the summer games. So uh, that's great. And uh, Allison, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Um, well, maybe I could just be a little bit more descriptive about what that means is like through our participation with the Summer Games, we're hoping to get people to visit at least four of our public art pieces and learn about those pieces. Um, they just sent us language during this meeting, which we have not reviewed, um, to get people to those um, sites. Um, and we'll be charged with maintaining the signs. So as you participate, give us a heads up if those signs go look bad or need repair or whatnot. Um, but all of them are close to Vanita's office as a hint. So she will be able to check in on them uh, routinely. I will be able to check in on them <laughs> routinely as I'm around the corner. Um, my office is around the corner. So hopefully you guys will all participate and it'll be a good experience to get our feet wet participating in the summer games. And thank you, Lynn, for bringing that idea to the table and we put it together. So hopefully it'll be a great way to get people engaged. It's great. It's a great PR move. So good work, you guys. And it's free. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the library will cover it, but that's 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 our locally collected taxes. Um, um, to, that goes to the library. So yay library, yay local library taxes. Uh, thank you for doing that. They're, they're such a great team. Um, and there's so much goodwill at the library. They're always looking for partners. I think um, there could be good publicity partners for us as well. We should use that. Yeah. So enthusiastic and this is gonna be really fun, so. Yeah, librarians are good friends to have and, and <laughs> for everything, for civic engagement, democracy, arts. Um, awesome work, you guys. Is it, do, do you want me to report in my council stuff out or are we? Yeah, we I'm just gonna go down the rest of the list and then yes, Lynn, if you wanna, um, we'd love to hear um, about, uh, about the council updates as well. Um, so our leadership working group, that's myself and Jamal. We have not met since our last meeting, um, unless Jamal, you have anything to report? Well, obviously we have Mary who has joined us. So that's part of yes. it. And we're reviewing more applications um, to fill David's spot. But we're so happy to have you, Mary. Um, and then we have the fundraising and development working group, which is myself and Allison. We have an open spot 
Um, so if you're interested in joining that working group, please do. Allison and I have not met specifically to talk about um, fundraising and development, although it seems from tonight's meeting that we perhaps have a few things that we can certainly uh, talk about. Um, so that would be great. And then our annual chair, vice chair review and election um, project, which is John and Allison. Do you have anything? Nothing to, to report. Fantastic. Then Lynn, please take the floor. Sure. Um, thank you. Uh, I think the big update from the council world is that um, the housing commission voted earlier today, the board of directors for housing commission approved their partnership with Avalon housing to co-develop a 68 unit affordable property at, at 121 East Catherine. Um, that's the development that's across the street from the People's Food Co-op. Um, it's currently a parking lot. Um, so 68 units, affordable housing to, uh, to individuals exiting homelessness as well as income qualified artists. So this is, this is um, the space that was in discussion, the, the, the art space came in and did the community engagement for. So it's it's nice to see that there's actual, sometimes bureaucracy is very, very slow. Um, and it's it's really nice to see that there's community engagement that's already been done on this. And to hear that the Housing Commission has signed that partnership with uh, our housing partner, just brings us that much closer to um, artists being able to live downtown. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. That's going to be really interesting. Yeah, John, did you have a question? There's also going to be a gallery as a part of that uh, whole project. So there's talk about um, so one of the our, uh, one of the budget considerations that we passed at the last meeting um, that I unfortunately wasn't able to attend. I was, that's like my most favorite meeting of the year. That is the is the budget meeting. Um, my son had COVID at the time, and I, I didn't want to. Um, inadvertently exposed folks. But um, uh, one of the considerations that I really rallied hard and advocated for uh, was a money from the marijuana excise tax revenue and having some of that, um, which is sizable, that was 900,000 that came back. Um, uh, actually it was 1.2 million. And then some of that had already been allocated towards deflection work through our, our city prosecutor's office. And then we gave additional money for that, another half million. Um, but I had asked for uh, um, kind of like a, like a, a business a generator incubator kind of space for um, uh, in support of a BIPOC businesses, and that that would reflect the history of that that area being a historically black community. Um, so that passed. So we'll see what the community engagement will look like to that end. Um, and there was talk about potentially having that in this building. In, in some form. So if it's an incubator or gallery, I'm all for it. So there is there is room on the first floor for um, mixed use. Um, I guess, let's see, uh, other budget considerations. Gosh, there was so much going on that night. I called in at the very end too. Um, there was uh, additional money that went to um, Barrier Busters uh, uh, went to a child savings account program at the county level to kind of speak to the impact on the war on drugs um, and vulnerable communities. Um, There's a lot of work that went into that night, um, but we now have a budget. We also affirmed the hiring of our, at the, up until then, our interim city administrator. So uh, Mr. Milton Dahoney is officially official now. Um, I'm really excited to, to have him on board. Um, as for arts work, oh, I have a, the update from um, Trishay Duckworth and the parks folks. So initially when Trishay came to the commission last year, when Travis was here, um, the plan was to have a Black Lives Matter mural on the streets. Um, and, I, and I think Public Works came back and said like, oh, there's all these things to consider. Uh, the color of the paint and um, uh, the the type of paint because it's a is a it's a busy street. Um, also, we're planning road prepare and we're bonding out for additional road prepare. So instead of just waiting for this to be scheduled out, depending on when we're going to fix the roads, I asked uh, the parks to step in and. Um, 
our parks uh, head of parks came out and met with Trisha um, and and community community folks who who did the painting in Ypsilanti uh, at um, gosh uh, Wheeler Park, and then the discussion went on to say like, well, can we think of other areas in the community that um, could really benefit from from seeing this mural? And uh, parks folks said, well, we're already doing this exhibition with. Um, Liz Margolis, and uh, that's already out in, in Gallup Park. So they went out to Gallup Park and looked and scoped it out. And that now the plan is that the painting will start in July in Gallup Park. Um, we, I think Parks and Shea just pretty much thought that it would be, it's, it's the most well-attended park um, and there's already artwork there and they can tie the mural together with programming. So they can also do that with, um, uh, community groups um, and do like an educational series around it. So yay parks. Parks, uh, they're really, and they'll do maintenance on this too. So um, they're finding the budget and they have staff who are dedicating themselves. They said this is really important to them to, to see it through. Um, so we'll be able to turn that out around from, I guess, I think planning to painting and programming in probably a month. So beginning of July to end of July, we should have something we should be able to meet each other in person, actually. Maybe we can think about that. Um, maybe the August meeting is actually meeting for the first time in person and seeing actual artwork in the, in the park. Um, so there's that update. Lynn, I what was the, yeah. What was the site for that? What was the park's location for that? Gallup. Park? So they're looking at Gallup. Gallup. I don't know where exactly in Gallup Park um, okay. because I, I couldn't bring my um, potentially COVID self to that meeting either, um, but they did meet and they were really happy. They said it was a really productive meeting. Um, I'm assuming it's still on a street. I think it's the pathway, the walkway. Oh, okay. Versus, walkway. Okay. Yeah, because I think the worry is that you know the cars. Um, I mean, it's such everywhere. It's it's so busy in Ann Arbor. You know, they just didn't. They wanted people to be able to actually see it instead of, of waiting for cars to clear. You know. Um, and then also cars would damage the mural. So um, the thought was that if it was on a walkway, it would be more visible and more protected. Um, Very easier, smart. Easier to maintain. Well, that's what they did in Ypsilanti, right? In the in the park. Um, so let's let's see. We're only we're only catching up to Ypsilanti like I think three years later. <laughs> so we will we'll get it done. Um, so I don't know if it was really smart versus just, I don't know, connecting all the dots is in a different way. Um, what else has happened? I think that's, oh, the, the, the flag thing came up on MLive. <laughs> I didn't have a comment from Ryan Stanton. I said, uh, I actually am not quite sure where it stands with this commission or where the conversation lies. Uh, the mayor has sent me this TED, a TED talk on, on the power of, flags or something and truthfully i still haven't watched it so <laughs> maybe i am not the best person to be involved in this whole flag uh i don't I, yes so i leave that all up to you um as actual artist to inform me as to what you would like to do with that i i think ryan stanton wrote a really amazing article on the history of ann arbor flags so he, he's already dug deep into the archives uh i guess the challenges for this commission to revisit what the process would be like if it was, I guess in the past they had a, a contest um, with students to redesign it. Um, uh, and yeah. Council Member Song, the commission just still needs his approval to move this forward. We haven't started to do anything with the, oh. the flag project because he hasn't really given us permission to do it just yet. Wait, he hasn't given you the TED <laughs> Yeah, the TED talk came from John. Yeah, we, we, we are full circle. We submitted, yeah, we, we submitted a resolution and we 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 needed that to go. Oh. Yeah. And the, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, John. Let me just clarify the TED talk. A student sent a TED talk to the mayor. Okay. He sent the TED talk to me. Okay. I presented it to the commission. The okay. commission said, great, if you will then just task the art commission with the project and the parameters okay. and the budget and what you want us to do, 
we would be glad to do it. So okay. now he gave you the TED talk. So I think <laughs> that, I think what we were hoping for uh, there was some kind of an official uh, resolution task <laughs> memorandum that the council okay. would ask the art commission to take this on with the parameters, with the budget, the timeline. Because okay. He didn't want to come up with that without knowing what he wanted. Well, I asked him and he's like, yeah, I definitely want to do it. Let's do it. But then I had no instruction. So, John, I mean, just be mayor. <laughs> we'll just, <laughs> well, like, then I wouldn't have, we could have escaped this whole path of the TED Talk. And then uh, it could have been done. Um, By the way, Lynn, the I've watched the TED Talk. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> I will commit to it. I'm so yeah, sorry. It's good. <laughs> well, in the redesign of the flag, we went as far as to assign it to a working group, and it's in our annual plan. I think oh, for the last two years that I know of, and I forget which working group, if it was outreach or special projects or youth outreach, and that had That's existed. So we can definitely revisit that conversation. Maybe oh we can gosh. redesign it. And once we all watch the TED Talk. <laughs> okay, I will tell Christopher Taylor. So Christopher Taylor, these are details that you did not share. As to like how we, we can't really, I can't really go back to commission and say like, he said, okay. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Thank you, Vanita. Thank you, John. Um, I will press on him to see where this resolution is because uh, I've never seen it. So I apologize. I didn't realize I had to ask for a resolution. I just. He just said, okay. So this is very helpful. Thank you. And well, so it was Greg Hoopy's idea that we should get some clarification from council. We just shouldn't act on our own. In fact, you know, so that the student that sent it to, to Christopher sent a, a, a proposal for a flag that was brilliant, frankly. Ooh, okay. you know, so, uh, but the idea is, should it be a, a wide open inclusive how is it going to happen uh is where's the money coming from for the flag and the question was we wanted to make sure that council was totally on page for us to to follow up on this so we wanted some assurance and craig hoopy thought this was the best way to do it was to ask the mayor <laughs> Okay, and then Craig Blue, and then Craig Hoopy left the building. Like Craig literally Craig left the building. So. Now we're back to you getting that TED talk. And uh. okay, um, I can do this. I will do this. Uh, thank you for the more detailed instructions. My goodness, uh, and thanks to Ryan Stanton for all that homework too. So uh, yeah, that was yeah. a great, great article. It really was. Um, I don't have other updates. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, I see your hand raised if you have a, a question or comment. Yeah, I, I had a question about the, the Black Lives Matter thing, um, just to go back to that for a minute, uh, which was is this Park One instead of having one downtown or as well as? Uh, we haven't. So, downtown? Right. So, I mean, I said, you know, what harm is there if we had more than one mural? Uh, and um, and Public Works was just like, sure. I mean, we'll just keep it in mind until we figure out, you know, the the schedule for the streets. Because I, I really didn't want it to be laid down and then torn up again. Um, I just, you know, versus laid down and then um, maintained. Um, so. So there's a, there's a process going on that where, where somebody at some point will say, yes, this is the right street, or do we have to do something? They already identified the streets. Uh, I think it's on Catherine, and for, 4th and Catherine was was what um, where we left it before I came on board. And that's what Public, Re Public Works had reviewed. So um, it's really, I think it's just a matter of once we get a schedule of what the repair would be like, and then we can then we can circle back, like with the timing of the repair for those streets. And it's it might coincide with this development, you know. It's on the CIP list, that project. So, you know, as it becomes some more reality, we'll probably tag it with our CIP efforts to say, hey, there's this project, let's make it happen. Okay, well, I'm glad to hear, because I feel like several other cities seem to have managed to paint their, their streets, so, you know. 
it seems to be possible to do. <laughs> yeah, there's there are efforts. Other cities have, um, like Ferndale has a rainbow cross, like a rainbow pride pride flag kind of crosswalk. Um, there, there are things that folks paint to slow traffic down too. So um, I don't know if that's something like the interim public works rep can can really engage on, but I think it's really interesting how how folks can use paint to to make streets safer for for children and families. Especially, I don't know if you all were following how um, this past year it was really difficult for. Uh, Anne Arbor Public Schools to hire enough bus drivers and there were bus routes that were canceled. So there were more kids were walking to school farther away. Um, I think the cutoff for uh, bus transportation is a mile and a half. So there's there's more interest in um, um, pedestrian safety and, and building sidewalks. We passed that sidewalk millage in 2020. So maybe there's a way where we can kind of integrate um, art to make that walk a little bit more safe and more interesting. I know there's a, I organize a, a, a walking bus from King School. So we have about 20 families that meet in front of my front yard every morning. And we kind of rock, paper, scissor who actually wants to walk with our children to school. Not all the parents want to do it because we have people that get to work or meetings. Um, and uh, some of the art that's right outside of King School that's etched in the sidewalk is eat your vegetables um, and the kids always yell eat your vegetables as soon as we get to King School so uh, if there's a more permanent way to do something goofy that'd be maybe we can talk to the schools about that too because they have um, I mean they have their billion dollar bond and uh, I'm you know there's some infrastructure that would be it would be really interesting if there's some artwork involved in that 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 plan too so besides vegetables you know and Mary, you have your hand up. Yeah, just quickly, Lynn and um, anybody here representing the city, I'm happy to advise on best practices for street painting. It looks oh. like Jerry's still on the call here. But in, in 2021, we did the, the giant mandala at the intersection of the right. And it was not meant to be permanent, but I, I have a lot of lessons learned and there's definitely things that can be done to make it permanent. So just check in with me if I can. Yeah, thank you, Mary. Yeah, I think um, that might be something that we would probably have to collaborate with um, Transportation Commission too. So they're the, they're the transportation nerds. They follow all sorts of ideas of cities around the country. Um, so maybe that might, because I, I see some collaborations between commissions lately, like um, police oversight. I'm also on police oversight. Uh, the chair collaborated with the Human Rights Commission and Transportation Commission and bringing together a resolution asking the police to um, make traffic data more publicly available um, and on the angle that it's a public safety issue and the Human Rights Council as a, a human rights issue in case there's bias involved in um, and, and who we who we um, ticket and who we pull over. Um, maybe this is a project for uh, you know art and streets that we can work on with the transportation commission and saying, you know, can you give us ideas of what you see in other cities, and we can do a joint resolution. Council can't say no to joint <laughs> joint resolutions. That's a lot of people uh, working together. So I offer that up to you for your consideration. Sophie. I'm sure everybody wants to go home, but I just wanted to mention, I guess it's connected with public art, that schools have had to cancel their trips to the Uma Museum, the University of Michigan Museum of Art, because of not being able to get a bus, because there wasn't a driver. Yeah, as transportation is so difficult right now. Um, I mean, there were kids who... I mean, yeah, it's been really difficult. The the areas where the routes have been canceled, it's it's not the fault of schools. It's you know a labor shortage. Um, but I, I, I thought that the museums are doing something virtually for students. I think to make up for that. You know? Yeah, they are, but it's not. I mean, it's nothing. It's not the same, right? And, right. And they generally have to cancel really close because they were hoping. So you know. It's, it's, the point is that they see the actual artwork, so it's a very different right. thing. Mm. 
Yeah, we're still in a pandemic, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how to fix the labor shortage. I'm at Mackinac. I could ask the folks here who have more authority than me in city government. So maybe um, I can ask them to do something more. I'll ask the governor and say, like, look, kids need to see art. So <laughs> they need to be fed, educated, and they need to see art. Um, yeah, I'm here until Friday. So that's the other thing I should offer you all. If there's something that you would like me to ask, our state reps, our congressional reps are here to Fudge. Fudge, can you bring? <laughs> you want me to bring back? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, I love this group. Uh, I don't know if that was very helpful in my report out to you. I am just really excited about the potential for affordable housing for, for artists to live in the city. Um, very, yeah. very important. I'm super excited about that project, especially since in, it's in the neighborhood of where I work and it, it's going to be an awesome creative sector over there. And to have a gallery included, that's awesome. With it too. And it's always very helpful, Lynn. Thank you for all of the updates and thank you for the offer for us to send you some questions um, while you're there. So uh, that is wonderful. And um, yeah, I already chased down Peter, Peter Buttigieg, Buttigieg, God, Buttigieg? Yeah, Buttigieg. <laughs> And he asked him about bike lanes. His security detail was uh, kind of nervous, but you know, I mean, no. <laughs> I can, I will be relentless, so I can chase folks down. Um, yes, we need to go out. I love it. It's great spirit. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, before we adjourn, if anyone has any last-minute comments, announcements, things that we should know, because we will not meet in July, we will adjourn again and, or come together again in August. Art Hop. Art Hop this weekend. This weekend. Not this weekend, the following okay. one. Yes. Next weekend, the 11th yes. to the 12th. Yes. Is that and backwards or the right way around? I don't know. Anyway, it's on. Do you want to send us an email with the dates as well, Sophie? Sure. Okay. Shall we send it to Benita or to yeah, everybody? Share the flyer. Okay. Yeah. We're great. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging in there. We had a really lively meeting. This is great. And uh, what's the that, August date? The August. What's the August? The first Wednesday in first August. Wednesday. Yeah, okay. but it's always going to be the first Wednesday and um, always third. the second. Uh, and we do skip a couple. August third. August third. Thank you, Vanita. And Thanks, Vanita. Yep. And um, welcome back, Mary. Thanks, yeah. John. Yes. Let's cause some trouble. <laughs> exactly. Good trouble. <laughs> All right. So with that, I am going to ask uh, for a motion to adjourn. Do I so have move. Thank you, John, in a second. Yes. Thank you, Allison <laughs> and Sophie. Thank you guys so much. This was a fantastic meeting. Have a great June and July. See ya. Thanks, Bye, everyone. everyone. Be well. Bye, everybody. Bye.